Hey guys, lol, so in this video we are gonna see, what if female Kyuubi gives Naruto a gift, this is part 1 and if you want more then please leave a like that will be awesome it motivate me to upload more videos, let's get in the video. The Kyuubi no Kitsune, nine-tailed demon fox, a force of nature said to be able to create tsunamis and cause earthquakes with a single swipe of its tails. A creature that had just been torn from the seal holding it within Uzumaki Kushina, a seal that was weakened by when she gave birth to a beautiful golden-haired baby boy, a creature that had been released in a state where it was being controlled by a masked man who had kidnapped the boy to force the Yondava Hokage, fourth Hokage, Namikaze Minato, away from where his wife had just given birth. After saving his son from the explosive tags covering Naruto's wrappings using his Hiraishin no Jutsu, flying thunder god technique, to get him to safety. Minato used the Hiraishin marker integrated into the seal that was being used to reinforce the weakened Jinchuriki seal to teleport himself to Kushina in time to save her from the freed Kyuubi. As Minato took Kushina to their son, the masked man used a teleportation technique to move just outside of Kanoagakure no Sato, the village hidden in the leaves, and summon the Kyuubi and forcing it to attack in the hopes of destroying Kanoa. With Minato after using a time space barrier to transport Kyuubi's Imri, menacing ball, away from Kanoa he was forced to fight the masked man and the strange jutsu he used to make himself insubstantial and suck things into a void. After engaging in a battle of speed, he realized that the masked man's jutsu kept him insubstantial until the second just before he attacked, using one of his Hiraishin kunai thrown just ahead of him so that it went through the masked man's head just before he started to attack, Minato formed a Rasengan, spiraling sphere, and teleported himself to the kunai before slamming the Rasengan into the masked man's head. Lifting the masked man up, Minato began to use his skills in Fuanjitsu to free the Kyuubi from the man's control. Akiyaku Fuan, contract seal, are you trying to break my contract with the Kyuubi? The masked man exclaimed. Now the Kyuubi will no longer be yours to control, Minato replied calmly. No wonder you are the Yondava Hokage, I'm impressed, you were able to wrest control of the Kyuubi from me, but no matter, I will have the Kyuubi in my power once again, this world is mine. There are many means available to me, the masked man said as he was sucked into a vortex coming from his only visible eye. I get the feeling that he wasn't lying, Minato thought before using his Hiraishin to return to top of the Hokage monument. Arriving back on top of the Hokage monument, Minato could see the Kyuubi a short distance outside the village slowly advancing against the resistance of the Shinobi under his command. Using his Hiraishin again he quickly returned to where his family was resting to prepare a jutsu that could save the village, at the cost of his life. Seeing Kushina still awake, Minato quickly started speaking Kushina, the Kyuubi is still attacking, I'm afraid there is only one thing I can do, seal it away. But where no who will you seal it into? Kushina asked. Naruto Minato replied sadly, how could I ask someone else something I would NT be willing to do myself? No. Kushina shouted, take me, I will seal it back into myself then commit suicide, that will at least disperse it for a time. While that might work, we have to think about the future, that man will return, by sealing the Kyuubi into Naruto we will give him the power he will need to fight back against him. But what will happen to Naruto when the village finds out he has the Kyuubi sealed within him? You have to realize that it will get out, especially if you plan to use the Shiki Fujin, dead demon consuming seal. Neither of us will be around to protect him Kushina asked quietly, seeing her husband's point, but not liking it. Minato paused thinking Shush is right, with the destruction that the Kyuubi is causing, there is no way someone won't leak this out, but what if I use that time release storage seal to give him what he will need to learn to survive? No that won't be enough, Gamabunta, limit sensory based gravity seal, no still not enough, but then what? If only we could be there to help him, that's it. Forming a cross-shaped hand seal with the index and middle fingers of both hands. Three cage bunshin, shadow clones, appeared, one of you go get the supplies we will need from the house. Beginner books and up, all of them that he might need. The second start on the time release storage seal on his right hand. Three month intervals set to start one week less than a year after the activation of the summoning seal give it a hand seal combination for the more advanced stuff, make sure it is reusable once it is emptied, and place a limit sensory gravity seal on his left shoulder, and finally, the third start preparing the summoning seal while I summon Bunter he said before turning to Kushina as one of the clones disappeared in a yellow flash, Kushina, can you still make a cage bunshin, shadow clone? Minato asked, 
Yes Kushina answered with a very confused look. Good create one. I will seal it along with one of mine into Naruto's mindscape with a hacker Fuan, 8 symbol seal. They will be in stasis, at least until he can generate enough chakra to maintain the cage bunshin himself, then a mind summoning seal will activate drawing him to the part of the mindscape where we will be, unfortunately, even with the cubus presence bolstering his reserves, that probably won't be until he is 4 or 5, so to make sure he will be safe and hopefully happy until then, I will need Bunter's help, he said before the third clone tapped his shoulder. Boss, the summoning seal is ready. We just need some blood from Bunter to finish it, the clone said. Good. Start working on the modifications of the hacker Fuan and the chakra sensor activation seal. Make sure Kushina's clone is activated first, he will need a mother before a father. Also, make sure it is a one-time thing that activates when he goes to sleep. We don't want him to lose consciousness in the middle of the day or something. And make sure that it can store up to two days of chakra in case he ever gets chakra exhaustion and a preservation function so we our clones can be destroyed by something simple like getting hugged to tight or if we train him. It'll be right back as soon as I get Naruto to sign the contract and get Bunter's blood, Minato ordered before turning back to Kushina once again. With this once he has enough chakra to maintain your clone he will be drawn into his mindscape and meet you. This will have the added benefit of draining him to a point so his chakra reserves grow. That, okay let's do it Kushina replied. Moving back to Naruto he addressed his clones, can you guys pause for a second? Receiving a nod from both clones, Minato picks up Naruto and leaves the house to summon Gamabunta. Biting his thumb he makes a series of hand seals and slams his palm on the ground shouting, Kuchi Yosei no Jutsu, summoning technique, a giant dull red toad comparable in size to the Kyuubi, wearing a navy blue vest and carrying a dosu blade at his back appeared right below him, lifting him high into the air. Gamabunta Sama, I'm going to need your help, Minato said to the giant toad. Kyuubi, ha? Huh? The toad muttered as he looked into the distance, anyways, how many times have I told you just to call me Gamabunta, so what's the plan? I'm going to seal it away into my son. Minato said sadly. What Gamabunta bellowed, you heard me. I'm going to seal it into my son, it will cost me my life and Kushina is already dying after the Kyuubi was ripped from her. I'm afraid that he will be in danger and friendless because word that he is the new container will most likely get out. Could you help me out? He begged. Hum, sure make him sign the contract. My son Gamakichi is about the right age Gamabunta said before another toad appeared, carrying a large scroll. Minato took the scroll from Gama, the keeper of the summoning contract, and opened it up before cutting Naruto's right thumb and using it to sign Namikaze Naruto in the first free column and then leaving a handprint in blood at the bottom of the scroll, then wrapping the cut up, he handed the scroll back to Gama and said thank you, Gama, you can take the scroll back now before turning back to Gamabunta. Gamabunta, I'm making a seal that will automatically summon a toad on his third birthday, but I need some of your blood to make the summoning tattoo, is that okay? Sure kid, he'll even waive the chakra fee until he turns 6, how does that sound? Thank you very much Gamabunta, holding up his right hand, Gamabunta replied no problem, take some blood. Minato complies, taking out one of his Hiraishin kunai he makes a small cut and lets some of Gamabunta's blood drip into an ink bottle, before jumping off of his head and running back into the house to place Naruto back in Kushina's arms then giving the ink bottle to the clone making the summoning seal. Seeing the third clone back he said do you have everything? Yes boss one of the clones replied, good, start on the time release storage seal on his right hand. Remember three month intervals after he turns four, the second clone, finish the summon seal and then finish the modified hacker Fuan and seal whichever of you hasn't used any chakra and Kushina's clone and get it ready to sealing the yang portion of Cuba's chakra, be very careful with the filter and healing portions, Whoever finishes first take two soldier pills and dispels so I can recover some chakra. I'm going to need it Minato ordered. Yes boss all three clones said as the original turned back to Kushina. Kushina, get your cage bunchen ready. I'll be right back with the QRB Minato said gently as he turned back to Gamabunta. Getting back on Gamabunta's head, the pair rushed toward where they can see the QRB in the distance. Just as they neared the battlefield, they see the QRB start to charge another Imri. Hurry up Gamabunta, we don't have much time. I'm on it kid. Gamabunta replied as he dashed forward and tackled the Kyuubi, preventing the attack from being completed. Stall him for just a minute while I prepare, it is going to take a lot of chakra to transport something this size. No problem, 
But don't waste any time. This guy is Tug. Our Gamabunta let out a roar as one of the Cuba's tails left a huge gash over his left eye. Gamabunta, are you okay? Yeah, good. Here I go, Minato shouted, and with that, both he and the Kuabi disappeared. Outside the house, with Kushina and Naruto appearing outside the house where he left Kushina and Naruto, Minato fell to one knee. Shit, that stunt used almost all of my chakra, I have to get a barrier up. As he thought that the Kuabi turned and started moving toward him, only to be stopped as chains appear out of nowhere and pin it to the ground. Thank Kami you are still alive, is everything ready? Including the precautionary measures? Minato asked, turning to Kushina only to see her leaning on the side of the building with Naruto in her arms and blood pouring from her mouth. Yes boss the remaining clones reply before dispelling. Well then, before I start, just know that I love you and Naruto more than my life itself and goodbye. Minato said to Kushina before picking Naruto up and turning back to the Kyuubi and starting to make hand seals. I love you too Kushina whispered back, back at the battlefield with Sarutobi Haruzen. As soon as the Kyuubi disappeared along with Minato, Haruzen turned toward where he could still feel the Kyuubi's presence, seeing it in the distance, Haruzen took off, running as fast as his old body could move. As he crested the top of the Hokage monument a few seconds later, he saw the Kyuubi pulled to the ground, Drawing nearer he saw chains holding the Kyuubi and whispered to himself Kushina before redoubling his speed once again. Coming within sight of Kushina and Minato he saw a spectral figure behind his successor and the Kyuubi managed to lift one paw and strike at a baby lying on the ground. Realizing what was going to happen, he started running again, knowing he won't be able to arrive in time to make a difference. With Minato, Kushina, and Naruto making the nine hand seals necessary to activate the Shiki Fujin and call the Shinigami to rip out the Kuba's soul. A spectral figure appeared behind Minato, mentally directing the Shinigami to separate the yin and yang portions of the Kuabi. Seeing how the Kuabi possesses too much chakra to seal it all, a spectral hand reaches through him, causing him soul deep, nearly unbearable pain. The hand stretches toward the Kuabi, who redouble its struggle to escape upon seeing the figure. Just as the Shinigami grabs the Cuba's soul it manages to free one paw and strike at what has the symbols that signify it was slated to be the Cuba's new jailer. Seeing the danger both Kushina and Minato rushed forward, interposing themselves between the Kuabi and Naruto, stopping the paw and giving Minato enough time to finish drawing out its soul and the Shinigami to split it, the yin, dark, half to with him into the Shinigami's stomach and the yang, light, half to be sealed into Naruto. Summoning Gamatora, a rare scroll toad, Minato shouted Fuan placing the key to the Shiki Fujin and the ceiling was complete, Minato collapsed to the ground still holding Naruto with the three whisker marks he was born with on each cheek. Seeing movement out of the corner of his eye, he wills himself to stay alive just a little longer, as Sarutobi moved closer, he breathed a sigh of relief knowing it is someone he could trust. Sarutobi, sorry you, cough, we'll have to take the hat again, take him, cough cough. Uzumaki Naruto, he is a, cough, hero, cough cough, beware, cough, masked man, cough cough, ceiling, and with those last words to someone he trusts Minato died leaving Haruzen holding a crying Naruto, the Shiki Fujin still glowing red on his stomach, one dying and the other preoccupied with baby Naruto, neither of them noticed a shinobi standing in the nearby trees. Two days later, council chamber Sarutobi Haruzen, the professor, and the former and reinstated Sandemi Hockage, third Hockage, sat in his chair at the head of the council table with a golden-haired baby in a crib next to him wishing he could just kill the civilian council and stop the headache they were causing. Kill it. It is just a monster screeched one of the newer members of the civilian council, one Haruno Saki. Silence shouted Haruzen, adding a moderate amount of killing intent to make sure everyone shut up. This child is not a monster. He is a hero who the Yondava chose to carry a very heavy burden and his name is Uzumaki Naruto. Yeah right spat another member of the civilian council, a fat merchant this time. It must be killed shouted several others, the shinobi half of the council and the elders looking at the civilians with disgust. I thought I said silence the sandemi said, increasing his killing account. Then how about you give him to me, I will mold him into a weapon for one of the elders, a crippled man with his right arm in a sling his right side of his face and eye covered by bandages, and a X-shaped scar on his chin. You will do no such thing Danzo, in fact if you even suggest it one more time, I don't care how important you are or how highly placed, I will kill you myself, 
if I even hear about you or one of your men coming in contact with him you shall suffer the same fate, Dio I make myself clear. Backed into a corner, but cursing the Sandemi in his head the scarred man could only answer Crystal Haruzan. You will address me as Hokage Sama is that understood? The Hokage rebuffed, raising his killing intent even higher, seeing something in Danzo that set him on edge. Yes Hokage Sama Danzo replied, now intimidated, I still say we should kill it shouted one of the stupider civilian counselors. Haruzan turned to the civilian council and raised his killing intent once again, causing several of them to lose consciousness. The Uchiha clan will take him in stated Uchiha Fugaku in a nearly emotionless voice, though the greedy glint in his eyes set Haruzan on edge. No, I cannot allow any of the clans to take him in as it will destroy the power balance in Kanoa. No, as much as I would like to take him in that includes even my clan, he will have to be placed in an orphanage, and seeing as word has somehow gotten out about his burden, as of this moment it is illegal on threat of death to even speak about this matter to anyone who doesn't already know with the exception of myself, Jiraiya, and Naruto himself, as of this second, his status as a Jinchuriki is an S-class secret, am I understood? The Hokage declared with iron in his voice. Yes Hokage Sama everyone in the council chamber answered. Also if I hear of anyone causing harm to Naruto, it will be even worse, death will still be the penalty, but it will be a long time coming at the hands of T and I, is that clear? Yes Hokage Sama everyone in the council chamber answered again, this time honestly scared. Now on to more pressing matters, Shikaku, how are our defenses? Haruzan asked Nara Shikaku, the Junin commander of Kanoa. Lifting up his head the Junin answered for the moment. They are surprisingly good considering how much damage we took. I have as many people as can be spared shoring out the defenses and the parts which can be easily fixed are being repaired as we speak. Thankfully it will take time for any spies to get word to their respective countries so by the time any offensive action could occur we will be in much better condition. Thus it is unlikely that we will have to worry about any further attacks at the moment then returned his head to the table. Good, Hiyashi, how did your clan fare? Relatively well, Hokage Sama. We did suffer several losses and several members went blind due to the intensity of the chakra but we will recover Hyuga Hiyashi, the head of the Hyuga clan answered. I'm glad to hear that, how about you Fugaku? Haruzan continued. The attack was a mixed blessing, I'm afraid, we suffered a good number of losses but the sheer amount of killing intent caused more members of my clan to awaken their Sharingan than at any other time in recorded history Uchiha Fugaku reported. How about your clan Sume, Inoichi? Shikaku, Shuza, Shibi. The Inazuka clan took moderate losses, Sume replied promptly. The Yamanaka clan took some losses but less than others due to the focus generally placed on our clan's mind jutsu, Yamanaka Inoichi answered succinctly. The Nara clan is in a position similar to the Yamanaka due to the ineffectiveness of our shadow jutsu on a being of the Cuba's strength Shikaku replied lazily, not even lifting his head off of the table. The Akamichi clan took slightly more severe losses due to the usefulness of our clan jutsu on the front lines, Shuza said. We suffered moderate casualties trying to siphon the Cuba's chakra and trying to weaken it, but like the Nara and Yamanaka clans we of the Abarame clan found our techniques to be ineffective and managed to avoid more serious damages Shibi answered in a monotone voice. Good, I'm glad to hear the casualties were not as bad as I feared, I'm afraid that I will have to call an end to the council for today. There are other pressing issues I must attend to, councillors in charge of defence, infrastructure, commerce, utilities, and those representing the city structures, I expect damage reports, expected repair costs, expected repair time, issues, injury and death toll reports on my desk by tomorrow morning Haruzan said as he stood and picked up Naruto then left the council chambers. The Hokage's office finally making it to his office, Haruzan placed Naruto in another crib and sat tiredly in his chair before rubbing his eyes and muttering to himself, I'm too old for this shit. Leaning back in his chair for a moment, Haruzan thought about what to do with Naruto before suddenly sitting up in his chair and calling out to what appeared to be thin air. Inu, a young man with a dog-marked mask appeared in front of the hockage and bowed, he appeared to be around 15 years old, though you couldn't be sure due to the mask, and had gravity-defying silver hair. The mask signified that he was part of Anbu, some of the most skilled shinobi in the village. After the young Anbu straightened up, the old Hokage signaled the rest of his Anbu guards to leave the room and activated the privacy seals in the room to ensure their conversation would not be overheard. Kakashi, you can remove your mask for a moment Haruzan said. 
Yes, sir. Kakashi replied and took off his dog mask, revealing a face covered by a cloth mask that covered his face until just below his eyes, but strangely his left eye was covered with his leaf Hitai 8. Please take a look in the crib and tell me what you think, Haruzan commanded. Kakashi moved over to the crib and examined Naruto for a minute before turning back to the Hokage and looking at him with a questioning expression in his one visible eye, is, is this, he said, stumbling over his words. The container for the Kyuubi, yes Haruzan said with a patient expression. No sir, is he, sensei's, is he sensei's son? He finally finished his question after several pauses. Haruzan glances at him sharply, studying him intently before speaking again, what would you do if he was, my boy? Hokage Sama. What do you mean? I would protect him even if it cost me my life, Kakashi answered quickly with absolute conviction. Very good, I'm glad to hear that, the answer is yes, he is Minato's son, and could you imagine him forcing this burden upon someone else? However, there must never be a word about this, he would NT last a day if it did, do you understand? Haruzan asked demandingly. Yes sir, Kakashi said after thinking for a moment, assassins from Iwa, Stone, sir. Exactly, possibly Kumo, Cloud, too the Hokage said. If this ever got out he would not last a week, he will already be in enough from our own people we don't need professionals at it too, anyway, he will need protection if he is to survive, I want you to choose and five others that you trust, not with this information as it is an SS class village secret, but with his safety, to guard him in three shifts of two. This assignment will last at least a month or two as I expect the worst of the trouble to occur in this time, understood. Yes sir, Kakashi replied with a sparkle of hope that was previously absent back in his eye. And Kakashi, the Hokage continued, if anyone tries to harm your new charge, Uzumaki Naruto, they are to be taken directly to T they will be tortured to death, if it comes up send a shadow clone to remove the offender, there must always be two guards, is it clear? Yes sir Kakashi replied sobered by the Sandime's seriousness. Good, go find the five other members of your team and report back, after that he will be taken back to the natal care ward at the hospital, he will probably stay there for the next two or three months, until things have calmed down, then he will be moved to the orphanage. Sir, can I, Kakashi started but was cut off by the Sandami. As much as I wish it was possible, there are three reasons it is not Haruzan started as he held up three fingers, one, you are too young he said as he dropped one finger, two, it would be too suspicious if you did, his only remaining student adopting a baby, that is just asking for trouble, and three is the same reason I had to give Fugaku. Fugaku, Kakashi exclaimed in surprise, that was never going to happen. But the reason I gave is still valid, you are the last member of a minor clan and Naruto becoming a member would throw the balance of power within Kanoa out of control, that doesn't even bring the fact that every member of the civilian council would block it if it was a non-clan member, trust me, if I could allow it, I would, unfortunately, the orphanage is the best of bad choices, Haruzan finished explaining, you are dismissed. Yes sir Kakashi acknowledged, turning to leave as Haruzan deactivated the security seals. The three-year-old Uzumaki Naruto was not happy, safe but not happy. For some reason no one seemed to like him, not the ladies who were nice to the other orphans. Not the other orphans, not even the random children that he occasionally met when the ladies took them to the park were nice to him, one or two times he had even heard parents whisper to their children that he was a bad boy and if they played with him they would become bad too, he didn't think he was supposed to hear them when they said that or the few times when people would say something about a demon and look at him with scary eyes. Every time he left the orphanage all the adults would give him weird looks that always made him feel like he didn't belong. In fact the only person who didn't make him feel like that was the nice old man who wore the funny red and white hat and smelled like weird smoke. The old man came by the orphanage every once in a while to spend some time with him and take him around the village, it was always fun to go places with him, when they go out the adults always greet him and call him Hokage Sama they always have very different expressions around him, though they do occasionally send him the strange looks, there are far less. Unfortunately when he left the ladies in the orphanage went back to being mean. They always fed him last and there were times when they didn't give him enough food. Sometimes he thought they did it on purpose, other times the bigger kids took some of his food and when he said something the lady in charge for the day would ignore him or the really mean ones sent him to his room saying that bad boys don't deserve to eat. Other times when the ladies were teaching the orphans to read or when he tried to look at a book they would send him to his room and say bad boys don't deserve to learn, once he heard one of the mean ladies say something about keep the demon stupid, he didn't think he was supposed to hear it. 
none of the other kids did and they were closer to her. He could deal with the mean ladies and not enough food, but what really got to him was the loneliness, sometimes it seemed to gnaw at his chest, and it wasn't his stomach because that sometimes hurt at the same time. The last couple of days everyone had been giving him looks that seemed worse than usual. He didn't know why but it kinda scared him, he really didn't understand it though, today was October 10th, his birthday, on everyone else's birthday people would give them happier than normal looks, but not him. It wasn't even just to ladies at the orphanage, when everyone had gone to the park yesterday the adults seemed to be getting ready for a party and happy but when they saw him they shot him looks that made him feel cold. He honestly wanted to just stay in his room, away from those looks, even if it was lonely. Hockage's office Inu, the Hockage called out, Hockage Sama, came the reply as the dog masked Anbu faded into view. It is October 10th today, yes sir, when was the last time we had to execute someone for trying to hurt Naruto? Saruto B asked his Anbu. Almost a year ago sir the Anbu replied, not missing a beat. Good, though I suspect something might happen tonight, have your full team guard him tonight and seal his room so no one but you can go in or out until morning, the Hockage ordered. It is his birthday, people often get drunk worse than usual at the Kuabi festival, so it would empty surprise me if that happens, however, may I suggest that you don't order the deaths this time. Giving his Anbu a piercing look, Haruzan motions for him to explain himself while speaking, why would you say that he knew? Sir, I'm not saying they should NT spend some time at the T&I division and their treatments, but it might be an effective warning to leave them alive afterward with the warning that if it ever happens again the treatment won't be stopping while they are alive, then we dump them at their homes and let them pay any medical bills that are necessary, the dog masked man defends. I see, you may proceed, but if anything ends up happening to Naruto, all butts are off, replies the Hockage. Yes sir, the Anbu says as he leaves, Naruto's room. Naruto went to bed early, not wanting to be around the mean looks anymore, he didn't actually go to sleep, but stayed in his room waiting for the night to end, for some reason he felt jumpy and not very tired, as though something was about to happen. Mountain, Mayaboku it's happening pops, just like you said it would, said a small orange toad with a blue vest and bluish purple markings on his face and stomach. Good, Gamakichi, just remember to tell him who you are and that the fourth arranged for you to be summoned to him on his third birthday, but most importantly remember to tell him how to summon you back to him, that way he can have a friend and if he ever gets in trouble he can get help, remember to dispel like I taught you when it is time, the giant dull red toad replied. Okay pops, I'm going now, the little toad said before disappearing from Mount Mayaboku in the summoning plane in a puff of smoke. Naruto's room Naruto was just on the verge of falling asleep when a popping sound echoed through his room causing him to jump up in time to see a small frog appear on his bed. Yo, the small frog said as soon as the smoke cleared and he could see Naruto. A speaking frog, said Naruto, I'm not a frog, I am a freaking toad, you dimwit, said Gamakichi. Still, a speaking toad, how is that possible? Who are you anyway? Where are you from? Why are you here? How did you get here? Naruto asked almost too quickly for Gamakichi to understand, until he suddenly seemed to realize where he was, we have to be quiet otherwise the ladies will come yell at me, and they are kind of scary today. Slow down one at a time I'll answer the ones I can, first of all. I'm a summon, summoned creatures are different from animals, but other than that we're stronger than animals and can talk, I don't know how, I guess I'm just too young, then again if I was older I might not fit in this room, I'm from Mount, Mayaboku, I guess that is like the Kanoa of the toads, the reason I'm here is because of that tattoo on your right hand, that yon, yond, that fourth guy made it to summon me on your third birthday. Naruto lifted his left hand and saw a tattoo that had never been there before, where did this weird drawing come from? I don't know, other than it is a seal that fourth guy made it to summon me, Gamakichi answered. A seal? What's that? I don't know, Pops said he would tell me when I grow up, that's what he always says when we're talking about interesting stuff, Gamakichi replied. Man, Gigi always says the same thing, you'll understand when you grow up or he'll tell you when you're older, he says that whenever I ask about my parents, at least he doesn't tell me my parents abandoned me like the orphanage ladies, he said much more quietly before continuing, I wish I could grow up now so I could understand. Ehh, why would you want to grow up? There is so much to do now, Gamakichi said looking confused, like make friends, eat candy, and learn cool stuff. But I don't have any friends, Naruto said in a quiet voice. Then he'll be your friend, Gamakichi said, thinking he looks really lonely, 
but he is interesting before continuing, but could you give me some candy? Really? You'll really be my friend? Yatta. I finally have a friend, Naruto said jumping up in excitement, that place inside his chest that sometimes hurts seemed much smaller, sure I can give you some, whenever I can get some myself, but we're going to have so much fun together, this will be awesome, I finally have a friend. Wow, thanks Gamakichi said, astonished as his excitement at just having a friend and wondering what the village people had done to prevent his new friend from having a single friend, it was just sad, how lonely must the kid have been literally starving for companionship, just for someone to talk to. Nene, -E, now that we are friends can you tell me your name? Naruto said picking up again. Im Gamakichi, what's your name? Gamakichi said. Im Uzumaki Naruto, databio, Naruto exclaimed happily. Nice to meet you fishcake, it's not fishcake, it's maelstrom, Naruto shot back. Do you even know what a maelstrom is? Gamakichi asked. Um, no, not really, so what is it? I think it is a really big storm, not too sure though. So what is this place like anyway? Gamakichi asked. So began the conversation that marked the start of Naruto's first real friendship. Naruto and Gamakichi talked for several hours telling each other about their homes and Gamakichi telling Naruto about his pop and brother and the elders and some of the other toads from Mount Mayaboku. Their conversation continued until Gamakichi saw Naruto start to nod off. Okay it is time for me to go home now. I'll see you next time Naruto, Gamakichi said, getting ready to dispel. Wait, wait, how will I see you again? Naruto asked a hint of desperation in his voice. That was way too close, Gamakichi said with a sigh of relief. I almost forgot the most important thing. I summon me again, just smear a little bit of blood over the summoning tattoo. Also Pop said it was important that you don't tell anyone about me. He said summons are secretive like that but I'm not sure why. Another one of those things I need to be older for. That sounds like fun, something for just the two of us. Yatta, Naruto replied, excitement once again filling his voice. Of course, a boss always has to look after his underlings, Gamakichi said haughtily before deflating, at least that's what Pops always says. Naruto started laughing sleepily and just as he started to fall asleep he saw Gamakichi disappear in a puff of smoke, for the first time in a long time he fell asleep with a smile on his face. One year later it has been just a week less than a year since Naruto first met Gamakichi and it has been the most fun that he has ever had. Every time he could get away from the orphanage ladies or whenever he was sent to his room for some made up reason. And by now he had realized that most of their reasons were made up, they just wanted to get him away from everyone else, but Naruto didn't mind anymore, even if none of the other children would be his friend, he had someone he could talk to, for the past six months he had been learning how to escape the orphanage ladies so he could go somewhere and summon Gamakichi to have fun with. Just like every night for the past year months, Naruto and Gamakichi were sitting on his bed, tonight they were sharing the couple pieces of candy that Naruto had managed to find, they were talking about the old toad sages of Mount, Mayaboku, Shima and Fukusaku and how Shima was always grouchy and would hit anyone who got in her way with her kitchen spoon. Just as they were getting into talking about the old toads, something unexpected happened. He felt a tingling in his right hand, just like when he summons Gamakichi, but from the wrong hand, a puff of smoke appeared and when it disappeared there was a small pile of books, just like the ones that the ladies would empty let him read. Awesome, books, I've always wanted to see one but no one would ever let me, Naruto said a happy smile splitting his face as he went to pick one up, only for his smile to fade as soon as he opened it. I've finally got some books, but I can't read it, Naruto finished sadly. What do you mean you can't read it? I thought they were supposed to teach you to read and other basic stuff like that. They are, but every time I they start to teach they send me to my room for some made up reason Naruto replied. Okay, then I'll teach you to read, how does that sound? Gamakichi asked, secretly disgusted and pissed off that people would refuse to teach his friend just because of something he couldn't even control. So Gamakichi started teaching Naruto to read and over the next two months he would learn how to read at an incredible rate. October 10th, four years after Naruto's birth Hello Naruto, how are you doing today? The old man wearing red and white robes and a triangular hat with the kanji for fire on it asked. I'm doing great today GG, old man, the four-year-old boy said, not completely meaning it. He was wearing nondescript clothes, a white t-shirt with a red spiral on the back, faded grey shorts, and worn out sandals. So what do you want to do today Naruto? Hmm, can we, go someplace to get something good to eat and maybe get some candy? Naruto asked thinking about his best friend's love of candy. 
All right, Naruto, but what would you like to eat? The old man asked. I don't know. You pick Gigi, the whisker marked blonde replied. Hum, what would you like? Wait, I know. How would you like some ramen, Naruto? What's ramen? Let's go find out. Okay? Sure. Gigi Naruto replied as the two start walking away from the orphanage, like last year when they went out just before his birthday all of the adults' eyes are cold, but it seems even worse than last time. Gigi, why does everyone have those scary eyes today? It looks like they're going to have a party, should NT they be happy? Naruto asked after they had walked a few minutes. Yes Naruto, they should be happy, but don't worry about them Haruzen answered, secretly amazed that a four-year-old boy had been able to pick up on the animosity bubbling around them even if he couldn't yet understand what it meant. After a few more minutes of walking Naruto began to smell something amazing in his mouth immediately began watering, following his nose he started to move faster, almost running, making the old hockage hurry to catch up as he called out to Naruto, Naruto, where are you going in such a hurry? To wherever that amazing smell is coming from he replied before coming to a stop just outside a little building with a sign that said Ichiraku Ramen. I guess this was a good choice Haruzen thought, but how did he smell it from all the way back there? I bet that an Inazuka would have trouble doing that, well, that works well Naruto. This is where I was planning to bring you anyway. Really Gigi, that's great, it smells so good, well go right on in Naruto the old hockage said before following Naruto into the stand and sitting on one of the chairs at the counter. A voice called out from an open door behind the counter, we'll be with you in just a second, Ayami can you go see who it is for me? A young girl, probably 9 or 10 years old, with peach colored shin and shoulder length brown hair, comes out from the back room and first takes in the hockage as he is much taller, but soon shifts his gaze to the young boy next to him. Naruto can practically see the hearts form in her eyes as she suddenly lets out a loud squeal kawaii and appears right next to him so quickly he never saw her move, Suddenly he finds himself scooped into her arms and held there, too surprised to struggle, after a few seconds, he realized that he didn't want to struggle. Here was someone other than the old man that was actually being nice to him. Hearing his daughter's squeal a middle-aged man with tan skin and short brown hair covered by an odd white hat comes out, seeing the hockage he cheerfully said hockage sama before turning to the little boy that his daughter was holding. Chuchi, how are you doing today Haruzen asked, hearing a new voice, Naruto quickly looked up just as the man turned to him. As Naruto looked at him he saw something he had never seen before, instead of his eyes turning cold and angry they became soft and sad. I hear it is your fourth birthday today, happy birthday, my name is Ichiraku Chuchi and the girl that is now attached to you is my daughter, Ayami, what can I get you to eat the man, Chuchi, asked him. Naruto looked at the man, almost too surprised to speak. No one other than the old man had ever wished him happy birthday before and no one had ever hugged him before. Thinking about what the man with kind eyes said Naruto quickly asked for his advice, I don't know, it is just that something smells really good, do you know what that is? Hum, Chuchi said with a thoughtful look, maybe miso would be good for you. Miso? Yep, miso flavored ramen, it is really good miso broth with ramen noodles floating in it with some vegetables and pork slices, how does that sound? That sounds great Naruto replied, and what would you like, Hokage Sama? Chuchi asked. How about we just get two bowls of miso ramen Haruzen answered good naturedly. Okay coming right up, Ayami come help me back here before you strangle the poor boy. Okay dad, im coming Ayami said reluctantly, as soon as they both disappear into the back room Naruto turned to the Hokage, their eyes, they're nice. Yes Naruto, unlike a lot of the villages, they accept you for you and can see that you are a really good boy, Haruzen smiled as he saw Naruto's face brighten, sometimes the most important thing is to find those people who will. Yeah, from now on I will protect those people who are nice to me Naruto promised to himself. Ayami, here is the first bowl of miso, take it out to Naruto for me would you Chuchi commanded gently from the back room. Okay dad Ayami said as she appeared from the back room carrying a large bowl in her hands before setting it down in front of Naruto. This smells really good, how do I eat it? Naruto asked. First you take a pair of chopsticks and break them apart like so. Ayami said as she reached for a pair of chopsticks stuck together in a large tin on the counter. Then she twisted them and suddenly she was holding two sticks. Then you lift use them to pick up a noodle and lift it from the broth to eat it. Remember, it might be really hot so blow on it, she continued showing him how to pick up some of the long noodles from the broth and blowing on them to cool them down before holding them out for Naruto to eat, that is all there is to it, 
that you might want to eat some to the other pork and vegetables between bites of the noodles, then at the end you drink the broth she finished as she watched Naruto's eyes light up as soon as he tasted the noodles. This is the best thing I've ever tasted Naruto said as he took the chopsticks from my army and Chuchi came out and placed a second bowl in front of the hockage. I'm glad to see you like it kid Chuchi said as he watched Naruto gobble down his ramen at insane speeds, only for him to look at the bowl mournfully when there was none left, would you like another bowl? Can I really? Naruto asked hopefully, they never let me have seconds at the orphanage, even when the bigger kids take my food. Of course you can Chuchi reassured Naruto, noticing the grave and slightly angry look on the Hokage's face as he went back into the kitchen. Naruto's second bowl came quickly and this bowl he ate a little slower after he looked over at the Hokage and saw him savoring his ramen in a way that looked almost dignified, as dignified as it is possible when eating ramen anyway, so though he wasn't completely successful, he tried to emulate the old Hokage and he ended up eating a little slower. When they had both finished, the Hokage placed money on the counter and looked at Naruto, Naruto was looking at Chuchi almost shyly and it reflected in his voice when he started talking, can I come here again? He quietly asked. Of course you can, you are welcome here anytime Chuchi said in a kind voice, anyway, I'm sure I army would love to see you again. With that the Hokage and Naruto headed back toward the orphanage, stopping only to get a bunch of candy along the way. Hokage's office shortly after dropping Naruto off at the orphanage, Sarutobi Haruzen arrived back at his office to make preparations for what would happen that night. Inu yes sir, the dog-masked Anbu said, his head bowed to his leader as he appeared. You know what tonight is, you know what to do about it despite me sending you on more dangerous missions during the past year, the Hokage said to one or his most trusted Anbu. Yes sir, the Anbu replied, good, get to it the Hokage commanded, watching his shinobi disappear in a shunshun to do his job. Mountain, Mayaboku yo pops, im home, Gamakichi said when he reappeared at his home on the summoning plane. Gamakichi, how is your friend doing, his father, Gamabunta asked. H is good pops, but H is so smart it's almost scary. What do you mean? Well, did you know that the people that were supposed to take care of him refused to teach him to read? What, they did what? Gamabunta exploded, yet pops, they refused to teach him how to read making up some excuse to send him out every time they were supposed to teach him, Gamakichi replied. So what did you mean that he is so smart it is almost scary? Well, about two months ago a bunch of books appeared from some sort of storage seal on his right hand and he got really excited because it was the first time he was ever allowed a book. That lasted until he opened one up and realized that he couldn't read, so I started teaching him to read and in just two months he can read much, much better than I can, I mean he can read in an hour what would take me a week and he understands it better than me too, in fact he has already run out of books to read and has started to read them over, but he memorized a couple of them by just reading them once, Gamakichi explained. Hmm, I guess he takes after his father in more than just looks if what you have told me is true, but that other seal is interesting, I guess Minato was hedging his bets, Gamabunta said before letting out a bellowing laugh, so how do you like him Kichi? H's awesome pops. H is really fun and he even shares his sweets, even when I know he doesn't get them often, but why did you wait so long to ask Gamakichi asked. I wanted to give you a chance to get to know him first before I asked, anyway, keep watching out for the kid okay Kichi. Sure pops, he is my underling after all Gamakichi replied in a condescending tone. H a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a one month later, orphanage. Things had continued in the same fashion they had been since the books first appeared, most days Naruto would sneak away from the orphanage and summon Gamakichi to play with him, then after everyone else went to sleep he would summon him again or sometimes he would just read, but more and more he would summon Gamakichi since he had practically memorized every book he had. He had summoned Gamakichi to play again, bored of reading the same books again and again. Gamakichi, do you know any games we could play? Naruto asked plaintively. How about Jan Ken Pon? Rock paper scissors, my brother Gomatatsu just taught me how to play, but he isn't very good Gamakichi said with a sigh. Sure, how do you play? Well first you say rock paper scissors shoot and you hold out your hand in one of three ways, if you hold your hand out flat it is considered paper which can cover rock, which is what it is called when you hold out your hand in a fist, but is cut by scissors, which is what it is called when you put out your first two fingers, and scissors are in turn crushed by rock Gamakichi explained. It sounds like fun. But what is the point? Naruto asked. That is what I thought at first too, 
but I heard Pops tell Gamatatsu about it one day, he said it is a lot like the technique Shinobi use, each type of technique is strong against some things are weak against others. Shinobi, you mean those people who make shapes with their hands and go cool stuff like disappear, like Hokage Gigi, Naruto said. Exactly, but he is actually the strongest shinobi in the village and one of the strongest in the world, at least that's what Pop said Gamakichi answered to Naruto's unasked question. Awesome, but what do you mean about ninja techniques? Naruto asked. Pop said it is like the elements or taijutsu that shinobi use. Every element that shinobi use, like spitting a fireball or making a wall of water, is strong and weak against another element like how if someone spit the fireball and it hit a water wall it would fizzle out, but if it collided with a wind bullet it would get much stronger, the same is true for types of taijutsu, say you had three fighters, one is very strong, one is very fast, and one is very agile, the strong one would nt be able to hit the agile one, the agile fighter couldn't avoid the fast one, and the fast one couldn't hurt the strong fighter Gamakichi explained. I see, let's play. Naruto exclaimed, over the next half an hour Naruto and Gamakichi played Jan Kenpon, but no matter what he tried, Naruto couldn't win more than one in ten games. This is so unfair. It is so much easier for you with your smaller hands, you can change your choice really quickly when you see me make mine Naruto complained. So you finally realized it, huh? Gumatatsu still hasn't, but that is what the shinobi world is about, tricking your opponent, if you learn to move your hands faster you could probably. When Gamakichi started talking again, Naruto's right hand started tingling again, just as he was about to say something about it, a plume of smoke appeared, cutting Gamakichi off, and when it cleared there were more books and almost twice as many this time. Yatta, more books, Naruto exclaimed happily, cool, you were really starting to get bored with the last set, huh, I guess it is good that there are so many books this time considering how quickly you can read now, Gamakichi replied. Yeah, I guess sir. Look there are some storybooks like last time but there are also some like this, he said as he held up a basic math textbook, a book labeled a history of Kanoa and another labeled the basics of chakra, what's chakra? Chakra is the energy that ninja used to use cool jutsu and stuff like walk on the walls or water, at least that's what Pop says, Gamakichi answered. That is so awesome, Naruto said, already opening the book. I can see my underling is having fun. Gamakichi said to see if Naruto was even paying attention anymore, not really surprised when Naruto didn't even reply to his underling joke, seeing how absorbed Naruto was, Gamakichi dispelled returning to the summoning plane. Once again Naruto's schedule changed, he would still sneak away to summon Gamakichi and play during the day, but now he would just read his new books at night, the chakra book was just so interesting that he couldn't put it away during the times he dared to take it out from under the loose floorboard under his futon. He didn't want one of the ladies to take it away after all, so he only took it out after everyone else went to bed, the orphanage ladies never checked on him after he went to bed, that was really lucky for him especially because if they had, they would have seen how his eyes had changed and the pupils became slits, allowing him to read his book as though it was still daytime. After reaching the end of the basics of chakra Naruto couldn't help but think how cool chakra was, really wishing he could use it himself, hmm, maybe Kichi will know how to use it. I guess I will ask him tomorrow Naruto thought to himself. Putting away the now finished book, Naruto looked through his new books again wondering what to read next, searching through his books, he saw what looked like a letter hanging out of one, blinking in curiosity he took out the letter and started reading. Hey Naruto how are you doing? Bad question I know, but I have to ask as I can't be there to see for myself, you should be almost four when you read this, and since I'm dead there isn't too much I can do for you at the moment, just to make sure I'm not completely useless, I wrote this letter and placed the storage seal on you to give you the stuff that you will need to survive. I just want you to know, despite what other people might say, you were wanted and loved, if they hadn't died your parents would let nothing in the world keep them away from you. To make sure you know this, I placed several seals on you. They have several functions as you might have guessed, the first one, the one on your left hand lets you summon the toads, the second one on your right hand is a storage seal that will give you new books to read and learn from every three months. As you might have noticed there are books on stuff like chakra, math, and history, the math and history is just general stuff that everyone should know, but the chakra book I gave you in case you want to become a shinobi. Have you ever thought about becoming a shinobi? If you have. In another three months there will be a book that explains hand seals and another letter that will tell you a set of hand seals that, as long as you can mold chakra with them, will unlock another set of books, 
these are a series of books will help teach you more about being a shinobi, including an introduction to the shinobi arts, an introduction to fuinjutsu by Namikaze Minato and a guide to physical development necessary for youthful taijutsu by Maito Gai, the first one will introduce you to ninjutsu, the ninja arts, taijutsu, the physical arts, and genjutsu, the illusionary arts, for now I suggest you start with the guide to physical development and start training, just remember that more advanced books will come every three months. To help you out with your training I placed a limit sensory gravity seal on your shoulder, this seal will very slowly increase the gravity that affects your body, similar to the weights in the physical development but better, this seal is called a limit sensory because it detects when you are completely used to the gravity level and slightly increases it, if it becomes necessary you can shut it off with a pulse of chakra and a simple kai or increase it manually when you begin to train. If you decide not to become a shinobi and don't do this the seal will continue to give you books for general education. I know this isn't much but I promise there will be more. Love father they love me Naruto thought after reading the letter from his father he began crying, they really love me, they might have been pushing into it, but was more determined than ever to become a shinobi, thinking about it, he decided to ask Gamakichi if he knew how to get access to chakra. Over the next month, Naruto worked with Gamakichi to get access to his chakra. First he had to learn how to meditate, then when he learned to still his mind he turned his attention inward, trying to feel the flow of energy through his chakra circulatory system, though what the chakra circulatory system was he still wasn't completely sure, Gamakichi wasn't sure either, it was one of those things that his pops said he would understand when he gets older, then the final step was learning how to manipulate chakra flowing within him. Once he finally learned to manipulate his chakra, he began doing the exercises described in the basics of chakra, starting with the leaf floating exercise. Despite it being the easiest chakra control exercise, it took him almost two months to successfully keep a leaf floating over his forehead without blowing the leaf off of his forehead or destroying it. During this time he kept up with his reading and sneaking off to play with Gamakichi, so by the time he received his next batch of books he had already finished reading all of his books and doing the exercises in the math book, he even managed to read a couple of them including the basics of chakra, more than once, and was starting to try the tree or in his case the wall walking exercise. Finished with his last batch of books, he picked up a new book and read it until he was ready to go to sleep, never guessing that the simple act of falling asleep would give him one of the things he wanted most in the world, a mother. Mindscape waking up in an unfamiliar place, Naruto looked around, in one direction was a sewer-like landscape in the other was what appeared to be a beach on a lake, like those he had read about, out of the two options he definitely liked the beach better. Naruto started walking down the beach and after several minutes of traveling he came to a traditional house that somehow seemed to be out of place. His curiosity peaked, he decided to go in and explore the house, at first it seemed to be completely empty, but when he came to the master bedroom he found something that he would never expected, in that room were two coffin-like blocks of what appeared to be ice or crystal, one of them was almost completely clear like it was barely there at all. The other was so opaque that he couldn't even tell if there was anything in it, the clear one held a beautiful woman with waist-length crimson hair. I wonder who she is, Naruto muttered to himself, reaching to touch the clear crystalline box with his fingertips, excited for some reason, as soon as he touched the box, the substance holding the woman shattered and she would have fallen to the ground if Naruto hadn't run forward to catch her. Anno, are you okay miss? Naruto asked, still supporting the unknown woman as she started to wake up. Um, what happened? Where am I? Who are you? She asked, still dazed. I don't know what happened or even where we are, but my name is Uzumaki Naruto, Databio. Naruto, you are Naruto? She asked taking a step back to get a better look at him. Yeah, who? He started to ask, but was cut off when the woman suddenly hugged him so tightly he could barely breathe, at first he wanted to struggle but it as he stood there with her arms around him he could feel another part of that knot of loneliness in his chest start to come undone. After just several minutes of just standing there in her arms he began to feel her shaking and after a second he began to hear her sobbing, when she finally looked up he could see the tears flowing down her cheeks, I can't believe it worked, I wanted to meet you so badly, she said through her tears. But why, why did you want to meet me? And who are you? Naruto asked, slightly overwhelmed, especially by the expression he could see on her face, it was something he had never seen before, so there was no way he could know that the expression was one of love. I sorry if I surprised you Naru-chan, but I'm your mother, my name is Uzumaki Kushina, the woman said, tears still running down her face, 
but Naruto could tell they were tears of happiness. Okar-san, Ka-chan, but I thought you were dead, Naruto said, a little accusation in his voice. But I am dead Naru-chan. I died the day you were born, what you see here is a combination of ninjutsu and fuinjutsu that your father and I performed so even after death we could be here for you, Kushina said. But where are we anyway? And why did you wait so long to see me? That is easy, we are in your mindscape, Kushina answered. And the reason I didn't meet you until now is because I am technically a copy of your mother made out of chakra. The technique that we use to make this chakra construct is called a cage bunshin. It is a type of ninjutsu that makes a perfect copy of the creator but it takes a lot of chakra. When your father made this possible he set it up to activate when you produced enough chakra to sustain us so we would NT just disappear and leave you alone again. He set it up so until you produced enough chakra we would be in stasis, asleep you could say, your father is over there in that block of ice, when you start producing enough chakra he will wake up too. After thinking about what his mother said for a couple minutes Naruto asked another question, so what is a mindscape? Hmm, how to explain, think about it like a dream, the mindscape is a place in your mind very like where dreams come from, Kushina answered, trying to figure out how to explain such a complicated concept to a five-year-old boy. Naruto immediately started tearing up, so this is all just a dream, when I wake up again this will all be gone and I won't ever have met you. No, 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 this is not a dream, it is all real, think of this place as being right next door to a dream but where a dream fades when you wake up this place is real Kushina quickly reassured Naruto. So if this is not a dream, will I still wake up? And what will happen when I do? Naruto asked, still worried. Yes Naru-chan, you will still wake up, but don't worry I will still be here even when you wake up, just remember, if you want to come back you just have to will yourself here, just want it with all your might when you fall asleep in the real world Kushina told her son. So if this place is in my mind, can I change it if I want to? Naruto asked out of curiosity. Hmm, I don't know, I guess it might be possible this is part of your mind after all, but I don't know how you would do it. Well okay, whatever it doesn't really matter, I was just curious. Enough of the serious stuff, tell me about yourself Naru-chan, I want to know more about my son Kushina said happily. As Naruto told his mother about his life and answered her questions he never noticed the brief flashes of anger that flitted over her face, nor did he notice her happiness when he told her about his best friend Gamakichi. Naruto and Kushina talked about his life until he started to get tired. Seeing Naruto's exhaustion, Kushina took his head into her lap and started to gently sing to him. Relaxing completely, Naruto quickly fell asleep with a huge contented smile on his face. Despite some of the ladies that took care or the orphans, including the one that was in charge, being even meaner to Naruto than before, Naruto was happier than he had ever been before he had a mother. Even if she was technically dead it didn't stop him from spending every night in his mindscape with her. He actually found it surprisingly easy to get back to his mindscape, all he had was think about his mother as he fell asleep and he would immediately find himself in his mindscape, since he always appeared in the same place, where the beach met the sewer, he started calling that place the door to his mindscape, at least to himself, he never did go down the sewer, as soon as he appeared he would always run as fast as he could to his mother's house. He was still sneaking out to summon Gamakichi, and getting better at all the time, and reading his books at night before he went to bed, but the perpetual smile that he had on his face all the time was caused by the time he spent with his mother. In the couple of weeks that had passed since he met his mother he had started to get the hang of wall walking, when he first tried it he had accidentally used too much chakra when he tried running up the wall like it was suggested in his book on the basics of chakra, he was blasted off the wall after just a couple of steps, sending him crashing to the ground and leaving a big dent in the wall, its stomach still growled in every time he thought about the aftermath of that attempt. Still trying to pick himself up off of the ground, Naruto heard a crash as his door banged open and the lady who ran the orphanage walked in, her eyes immediately went to the wall and she started yelling at him. What have you little duh, brat? Do you know how much it will cost to fix the damage you have caused? What were you doing trying to do? bang your head through the wall and make yourself a new window or something you stupid little shit. I should have known something like this would happen someday, you are just too stupid to know any better after all, but still, we will have to punish you, she said, her voice now taking on a slightly happier tone, hum, what should we do, aha, it might be a bit lacking, but as of this moment you cannot leave this room for two days for any reason, not to eat, not to use the bathroom, for no reason at all. So for two days he stayed in his room, 
not even able to summon Gamakichi or Reed for fear that he would be discovered when one of the ladies came to make sure he wasn't causing trouble, as they said. When he finally got out his stomach felt like someone had punched him over and over, he was just so hungry, he also had to go to the bathroom really badly, so badly that it actually hurt. After he had recovered from that ordeal, he decided to do the exercise a bit differently. He thought about it and realized that the goal was to get your feet to stick to the wall with chakra. But why did he have to be moving to start with, thinking that way? He laid down on the ground and tried to stick first one foot then the other to the wall. Getting a better feel for how much chakra it would actually take to stick to the wall, eventually, he started walking slowly up the wall, trying to get the timing of sticking to the wall and releasing his chakra down so he could actually move. When he got it down he started practicing it on the various surfaces and actual trees, when he snuck out to summon Gamakichi, as he couldn't actually move on to the next exercise because he couldn't find a big enough body of water. At the same time as he was getting control of his chakra, he was also learning from his mother, she was helping him master the math exercises and telling him more details for a lot of the history in his history textbook, especially after they found out that any books or scrolls that Naruto read appeared in his mindscape, so despite his young age and the conditions he was forced to live in he was happy and learning quickly. Mindscape Ka Chan, can you tell me my family? Naruto asked about three weeks after first meeting his mother. They had talked a lot about each other's lives, and to say Kushina was pissed off was an understatement, she would have been pissed off if any child was forced to live in such isolation, but the fact that it was her son made it a hundred times worse, it would be safe to say that if she could have gotten out of her son's mindscape she would have gone on a rampage, not that Naruto ever knew that. Not quite yet, but soon I promise Kushina answered reassuringly. Then what about your family? What do you mean Naru-chan? Kushina asked in return. I mean just like you're my mom, what about your mom and dad? Naruto said. I come from the Uzumaki clan that used to live in Uzushiagakure no Sato, the village hidden in the whirling tides, Kushina said with a far-off look in her eyes. We have a clan? Naruto asked excitedly, no, not anymore. Our clan was renowned for our longevity and our skills in Fuinjitsu, we were so good that many people feared our village, so much so that during the second ninja war Kumo, Cloud, Kiri, Mist, Aniwa, Stone, villages formed an alliance and destroyed Uzushiagakure, I would have been dead too if not for the fact that I was visiting a distant relative named Uzumaki Mito who lived here in Kanoa with her husband Senju Hashirama, the Shodava Hokage, first Hokage, Kushina answered. I know I have a book on Fuinjitsu Ka Chan, but what is it? How to explain it? Ah that's it. You know those seals on your hands? The ones that your books come from and let you summon toads? Kushina said after a minute. Yeah, well, those seals are a good example of Fuinjitsu. Fuinjitsu is a ninja art that very few people are good at. It can be hard to learn, but the Uzumaki clan has a special way to make seals that can be used in battle. Unlike Nin, Tai, or Genjutsu, Fuinjitsu can do just about anything if you take the time to figure out how to do it. A really basic example is a storage scroll, shinobi often use them to carry a lot of stuff while taking up very little room. What a storage scroll does is make a bubble of space, I guess you could say, that you can put lots of stuff in with the entrance being a simple scroll. That is so awesome. Can you teach me that, please? Naruto almost shouted in his excitement. Of course I will Naru-chan, I wasn't considered a seal mistress for nothing after all, I would be happy to teach you Kushina said with a happy laugh before continuing, but first, start reading that Fuinjitsu book and any others that pop out of the seal, okay? Okay Ka-chan, I'll start reading it tomorrow night before I go to bed. Good boy, do you want to start now? Kushina asked tentatively. Yay. Let's start, okay, but be warned this is probably the most boring part, do you still want to do it? Of course I still want to start. Well, you have been warned, the first part takes quite a while, you had to be able to write perfect kanji before you can start making your own seals, are you ready to start? Kushina asked in a somewhat ominous tone that made Naruto gulp in trepidation before he replied. Let's go, if we don't start I won't learn, alright, let's go, databane she said thinking crap, it's back again, I thought I had finally gotten rid of it this time. It was hard to say for sure, but Naruto thought he was making good progress on his study of Fuinjitsu and it was fun to learn. He had now read three books on Fuinjitsu, an introduction to Fuinjitsu by Namikaze Minato. Fuinjitsu for beginners level 1 and 2 by Jiraiya, and was working on level 3. 
The level 1 book had appeared from the storage seal on his right hand just before he met his mother and the second of which came three months after he met his mother, but he also received several more to read recently, when he unlocked the shinobi stuff his dad mentioned, he had read the scroll about hand seals then with his mother's help learned how to position his hands and mold chakra in the right way to use them. Flashback after he started reading the scroll about hand seals he started summarizing it for himself. There were 12 main hand seals all of which were based upon the Chinese zodiac. Tori, bird, anoshishi, boar, inu, dog, a hand seal commonly affiliated with ice release and some wind release jutsu. Tatsu, dragon, ushi, ox, tora, tiger, a hand seal commonly affiliated with fire release. Hebi, snake, a hand seal is commonly affiliated with earth release and wood release. Ne, rat, a hand seal is commonly affiliated with the shadow techniques of the Nara clan. Uma, horse, saru, monkey, usagi, hare, hitsuji, ram. There are also several unique hand seals that are used for certain techniques like the cage bunshin no jutsu, shadow clone technique, and some clans jutsu. Like the Yamanaka and Akamichi, second, there is a way to perform one-handed seals that perform assist in molding chakra the same way as the 12 main seals. These seals are much more difficult to perform and the person using them must have very good chakra control as they don't mold the chakra as effectively so the user must be more precise in the molding of their chakra. Finally, once someone becomes familiar with certain jutsu, they can perform them with fewer hand seals or if they are really good, no hand seals, but as with the hand seals this is very difficult. It requires all of the chakra control of the one-handed seals and more but the user must be very familiar with the technique as well. Some techniques also require an activation gesture, these gestures range from clapping for certain kinjutsu, like the rumored resurrection jutsu created by the Nidemi Hokage and the dead demon consuming seal of the Yondava, to slamming one's hands on a surface for the Kuchi Yose no Jutsu, summoning technique. At least those were the important hand seals, but it was hard to perfect the hand seals with just the little pictures in the scroll, so he asked his mom for help when he got to his mindscape. After finally mastering the correct movements with his mother's help he decided to gain access to the other books and scrolls about shinobi subjects from his storage seal. So on one of the nights he summoned Gamakichi, he reread the activation sequence that came with his third batch of books and performed it while concentrating on the seal on his right hand. With a puff-like sound, smoke filled his entire room for a minute and when it cleared there were at least 500 books in his room. There were so many of them, from Fu and Jitsu for beginners level 2 to 5. Intermediate Fu and Jitsu level 1 to 6, Advanced Fu and Jitsu level 1 4, even if these were thicker. A scroll on advanced chakra control, a scroll on advanced hand seal theory and jutsu creation, and even a couple of couple of jutsu scrolls if he wasn't mistaken, among many others, there were even a couple things that weren't stuffed read, there was a box with some weird gloves that when he put them on he could barely move his hands and another small box with some strips of paper in it, he took one out and used it as a bookmark. This could be a problem, Naruto said disbelievingly when he finished looking at all of the stuff that had just appeared. You aren't kidding Gamakichi said as one of the pieces of candy Naruto gave him fell out of his mouth. While I'm glad that I won't run out of stuff to read anytime soon, what are we going to do with them all? There is no way I can hide these all under the loose floorboard beneath my futon. I've got an idea, I'm going to dispel. Resummon me in 10 minutes Gamakichi said before disappearing in a puff of smoke. Mountain. Mayaboku reappearing on the summon plane Gamakichi immediately when searching for his dad. Yo pops, im back Gamakichi said when he found him. Already, that was a quick visit tonight Gamabunta said. Im going back in a few minutes, but I need to ask a question. Sure. Go ahead Kichi, well, Naruto finally got the hang of making hand seals and molding chakra in him so he decided to get the shinobi books and seals that his father placed in that storage seal on his right hand. His old man decided to place a bunch of stuff that he might need to learn to become a shinobi in that seal that he could access when he how to make hand seals and mold chakra, so when he did the seals, we ran into a bit of a problem, there were over 500 books and scrolls and if we don't do something the ladies who run the orphanage will take them all, when we realized that, I thought we could store them in one of the dry storage huts here, can we do that pops? Gamakichi asked after he finished explaining the problem to his dad. I guess he was even smarter than I thought making a storage seal that held things that he could only access when he had started down the path of a shinobi, but he probably only meant for his son to use it after he entered the academy Gamabunta mused to himself before answering his son, sure Kichi, but use the third hut, 
the one that has been empty for a while. Thanks Pops Gamakichi managed to say before he felt the summoning start. Naruto's room as soon as he appeared back in front of Naruto he gave him the good news, yo, I'm back with good news, I just had to ask Pops for permission first, we have some huts back home that we use to store things that need to stay dry, I just asked if we could store your books there. Thanks Kichi, you're awesome, that is perfect my books will be safe and I won't ever have to worry about someone trying to steal them, but how are we going to get them there? Naruto asked, no longer worried about his books. That won't be hard just take a lot of time, first keep a few books to keep here and set him to the side, after you are done with that, summon me back again, I'm going to go back and go into the storage hut, that way when I dispel with some of the books I will appear right where they will be stored, okay, you find the books that you want to keep here and I will go to the storage hut Gamakichi said before dispelling again. Not sure what to keep, Naruto settled on keeping the rest of the beginner Fu and Jitsu books as he was almost done with the level 2 book as well as a couple more history textbooks and the scroll on advanced hand seal theory and Jutsu creation. He decided not to keep any of the Jutsu scrolls because learning Jutsu now would just get him in trouble. Instead opting to learn how Jutsu and hand seals really worked so when he finally got to using them he would have an easier time understanding them. His decisions made he swiped some blood on the summoning tattoo and Gamakichi appeared again. Are you ready? Gamakichi asked, yeah, good just start piling books on my hands, Gamakichi said as he held his small hands above his head, which wasn't as outlandish as it would have been when they first met, when they first met, he was slightly bigger than a large bullfrog now he was just a little smaller than a small dog, a pug for instance, he'll tell you when I can hold any more and dispel, then give me a couple minutes to find a place to put them and summon me back to do it again. Gotcha, Databio Naruto replied, so over the next couple of hours Naruto and Gamakichi successfully transported all of the books to the dry storage hut in Gamakichi's home, even replacing the books that Naruto kept under his futon. Thanks Kichi, you are the best Naruto said when they were finally done. Of course I am. Anyway, I'm tired, I'm going home for the night, see you next time Gamakichi shot back before he dispelled one last time. End flashback mindscape ok Naru-chan before we go into how you actually make seals. Since you finally have good enough calligraphy she said. But paused as Naruto started pouting, don't worry Naru-chan. I had to do the same when I was learning, but it took me a lot longer. Anyway, back to what I was saying, before I start teaching how to make actual seals. I'm going to teach you the basis of the Uzumaki style of sealing. Using this method causes any seals you make to be much more potent than if you made them with regular ink, but there are certain types of seals that require blood to make that you can use this method to make, the Uzumaki style uses your chakra to make the seals instead of ink, or maybe a better way to say it is you turn your chakra into ink that takes the form of the seal you are making, that is why it is possible to use it in battle. You don't have to waste time that you probably won't have to write out the actual seals. But be warned, don't use this method to make any seals you haven't fully mastered. Or at least don't activate them, like I said, your chakra makes the ink take the form of the seal you are making but to do that you have to have a very clear picture of what you want to make. For the easy things like storage seals you won't have to worry about it. But the more complex the seal the more careful you have to be. A very good thing about this method is that as soon as the seal deactivates all evidence of the seal itself disappears and no one can copy the seal, but that has a disadvantage also. If you want the seal to last you have to add extra chakra and kind of twist your hand as you are removing it, that stabilizes the seal and lets you reuse it, like if you are making a storage scroll or a storage seal like on your hand, do you understand so far Naru-chan? Kushina asked to make sure Naruto was following along. Yep, it is a good way to use seals in battle by making ink out of your chakra, but don't activate the seals you make this way until you have fully mastered the seal or when you are creating new seals and no one can copy them Naruto replied astonishing Kushina at how fast he grasped the concept and even more when he mentioned new seals since she had never mentioned them. Very good Kushina said hiding her astonishment, to start with just concentrate on forming a single symbol okay. Okay, this method would actually be classified as a ninjutsu, fuinjutsu hybrid, you make these hand seals, she said as she showed him a series of four hand seals, then channel your chakra through your hand while concentrating on the symbols and eventually the layout of the symbols to make the scroll, but we can worry about that later, just remember don't ever tell anyone how or even that you learned this and don't tell anyone you can use chakra unless and until you enter the academy. Naruto nods ok Kar chan then makes the four hand seals he was shown before slamming his hand on the ground and channeling chakra, a slightly smudged symbol for mother, Mew, 
ha ha, appears on the ground where his hand was. Seeing the symbol, Kushina immediately picks Naruto up in a huge bear hug and whispered I love you, Naru-chan in his ear before kissing his cheek. Naruto immediately turns to her and said, I love you too Ka-chan. So things went with Naruto practicing the Uzumaki sealing method with his mother in his mindscape and chakra control in the real world. Naruto was now able to make very clear and precise kanji appear and he started to write sentences with his chakra. He worked so hard it surprised Kushina, who sometimes had to force him to stop as he was getting close to chakra exhaustion. He had completely mastered wall, tree walking by this time and was experimenting with it. When he snuck out to play with Gamakichi he would tree walk while sticking a leaf to his forehead. Which was hard at first, but after a bit of practice he figured out how to do it. It was hard even though he had really good chakra control. After finishing that, he started making the leaf hover a few inches away from his head. Which was even harder as he had to both make it stick to his head and push it away at the same time. Balancing the forces so he didn't rip the leaf apart. During the times he was sent to his room, which were becoming more and more frequent. He tried some other things, first he tried to sit on the wall. Which wasn't too hard but different as he had never tried to channel chakra anywhere but his forehead and feet before. When he could sit on the wall without thinking about it at all he tried laying on the wall, first on his back, then stomach, then sides, sometimes with his head toward the ceiling and sometimes his feet, finally when he could do that, he tried walking up the wall standing on his hands, that was probably the hardest because he had never tried to use the muscles in his arms like that before, though the chakra part was pretty easy. As he stuck himself to the wall one night he realized he was unconsciously channeling a little bit of chakra to his eyes, wondering what it was doing he stopped the flow and everything went dark, darker than anything he had seen in his entire life, panicking, he let the chakra flow again and he could see again, I wonder if this would do anything during the day, he thought. The next day he tried to channel chakra to his eyes just like he had been doing the night before. As soon as he the chakra reached his eyes he could see everything much clearer. He could make out details that he had never noticed before. He was looking around, amazed by his surroundings when he looked out of the window and saw a strange sky blue glint of light in one of the trees just outside the walls of the orphanage. Concentrating on the light he pushed more chakra into his eyes and suddenly a man in a strange blank mask with just the kanji for N.E. Gen root on his forehead appeared deciding he had seen something he was probably not supposed to see he let the chakra flow stop and the man disappeared again though he didn't yet understand it he had just found out he could see chakra and when he channeled enough chakra to his eyes see through genjutsu despite not understanding what had happened he decided to practice sending chakra to his eyes so he could see that clearly again if he ever needed to then he wondered what would happen if he did the same for his ears or nose only to find that channeling chakra to them amplified his sense of hearing and smell many times over, so he practiced doing that too. Time passed, and soon it was the day before his birthday and surprisingly the Hokage showed up and took Naruto out for ramen. Ichiraku ramen almost as soon as Naruto and the Hokage entered Ichiraku ramen Naruto found himself swept up in Ayami's arms, she had a very powerful hug and before long he couldn't breathe. Can't breathe. Let me down I army Nechan Naruto gasped out as he banged on her arms. She immediately put him down with a contrite look on her face, I'm sorry Naruto-kun, I was just so excited to see our cutest customer again. Haruzan just laughed at seeing Naruto's predicament as he sat down at the counter, Chuchi comes up and laughs with him before saying it is good to see him treated like a normal child in a low voice. That it is, that it is the Hokage answered, before too much longer, Naruto was sitting at the counter with the hokage waiting for the miso ramen he had ordered, he ate fast like normal but once again tried to eat like the hokage, who looked somewhat regal even as he ate his ramen, not spilling even a drop of his broth, he continued to emulate the old man even as he ate his second bowl. When he finished his second bowl he looked at it mournfully but with a conflicted expression on his face. What's wrong kid Chuchi asked when he saw the expression. Anno, can I have another bowl Chuchi Oji San? but a different flavor this time, don't get me wrong I love your miso ramen, but I bet everything you make is just as good, Naruto answered quickly. Sure kid, how about a beef ramen this time? That'd be great. That will be up in just a minute, just let me go in the kitchen and make it for you Chuchi said as he moved toward the back room. So how is it today, Naruto? The old hokage asked, breaking through his ramen fixation. It's great, Thanks Gigi Naruto said and was about to turn back to wait for his ramen when a question popped into his head, Hey Oji-san, why did you decide to bring me out today instead of tomorrow on my birthday? 
Ah, I'm afraid I've got a council meeting tomorrow that is going last all afternoon, the hawkage said and Naruto could have sworn he saw dark clouds forming above his head. I won't likely be able to see you tomorrow so I decided to bring you out to celebrate your birthday today. What's a council meeting oji san Naruto asked, to start with, the council is a group of people that runs Kanoa and makes sure it runs smoothly, a council meeting is when the entire council meets to give reports and vote on issues, it isn't fun but a lot of political issues are discussed during the meetings so it has to be done, even if they tend to last a long time. That sure doesn't sound like much fun, it isn't but that is just one aspect of being the Hokage Haruzan stated. What is the Hokage anyway? I've heard people call you Hokage Sama before but what does it mean? Naruto asked as his new bowl of ramen was set in front of him. The Hokage is the strongest shinobi in the village, he, Haruzan started but was cut off by Naruto's incredulous outburst. You're the strongest person in the village Gigi, but how is that possible? You are really old. Ha 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 ha, I needed that, yes I'm the strongest person in the village. But that is not all the hockage is, like this hat I'm wearing is the symbol of the hockage. The hockage is the symbol of the village, he is someone who makes sure the village runs the right way. The commander of all of the other shinobi in the village, and if necessary is willing to put their life on the line to protect the village from danger, However the Hokage is sometimes forced to make very difficult decisions, meaning that I have to be not only the strongest in body but also in heart and mind, the person who is Hokage is probably the most respected in the village he explained. So those looks that the village people have when they look at you are respect? Naruto asked curiously. Very perceptive, yes they are, though sometimes there are looks of admiration thrown in as well. Someday I want to earn their respect have them acknowledge me like they do you Gigi and maybe one day I'll take that hat from you Naruto said with a serious expression. That will take I look forward to that day Naruto, but don't forget about your ramen, if you don't eat it soon it will become cold and the noodles soggy. Okay Gigi, Naruto said as he turned back to eat his ramen, a thoughtful look on his face. Oh and Naruto if you hurry up I'll take you to one of my favorite places in the village before we stop to get you some candy. Hearing that Naruto decided to stop trying to emulate the hockage and practically inhaled his ramen before turning back to Chuchi, that was just as delicious as the miso ramen, thanks Chuchi Oji-san, see you next time Ayami ne chan With that Naruto and the hockage start to walk away, never hearing the conversation between father and daughter. He is a really nice boy isn't he dad? Yes he is a great kid, I'm glad you think that, never let anything people say change your opinion Chuchi said to his daughter. Okay Naruto climb up on my back, I'm going to use a ninja technique called shunshin, body flicker, to get us to my favorite place Haruzan told Naruto after they left Ichiraku ramen as he knelt on the ground. Naruto quickly scrambled up onto the sandime's back, putting his arms lightly around his neck and watching as he made a ram seal before they disappeared. A few seconds later they reappeared at a very high place overlooking the entire village. After scrambling off the hockage's back and getting to his feet he said it is beautiful with a voice full of awe. Yes it is my boy, yes it is, we are on top of the hockage monument right now, on the Yondime's head to be exact, this is what I struggle to protect as hockage, this village and everyone in it the hockage stated with a reverent voice. Really, H is my hero, I want to be just like him. Haruzan chuckles at that, he couldn't help but think you have no clue how alike you are. They stood there for several minutes just taking in the beauty of Kanoa in silence before Haruzan suddenly picked Naruto up and they disappeared with the drifting leaves, they reappeared right outside the sweet shop where Naruto picked out a bunch of candy before returning to the orphanage. Orphanage Naruto was not having a good day, after all the fun he had yesterday he was hoping to have another good day. It was his birthday after all, but that didn't happen, the ladies that worked in the orphanage were all really mad at him for some reason today, he didn't do anything wrong but they were still mad. He snuck out of the orphanage early to avoid them but it was almost worse outside, the first few people he saw him gave him looks that were even beyond mad and after he got out of their sight he hid, making his way to the thick forest in a nearby forest he used his tree climbing ability to climb into one of the biggest trees and hide before summoning Gamakichi. Yo, how's it going Naruto? Not too good Kichi, yesterday I went and had a great day with Hokage Gigi, here you go by the way, Naruto said as he held out a bag full of candy. Thanks man, I'll take them if you eat them with me, but what's wrong? Okay, like I said, yesterday was great and I was hoping today would be just as good, but everyone in the orphanage seemed really mad at me, it was kinda of scary, I snuck away to get away from them, but when I got out of the orphanage the looks were even beyond mad, 
I hid from him too and made it the rest of the way here without letting anyone see me Naruto said, almost crying. Poor kid, Gamakichi thought, people hate for something that he had no say in and he is so smart that he notices it. Even if he doesn't understand what it means, I almost wish he wasn't so smart then he might not notice those looks, well, I'm not mad at you and I never will be, at least not like that. I'm sure the old man isn't mad either, so don't worry about it too much. Naruto sniffled, thanks Kichi, I needed to hear that. No problem, what are friends for if not to help you out when you're upset? When Naruto finally cheered up, he and Gamakichi played games like rock paper scissors and tic-tac-toe until it started to get dark. I've got to go now Kichi, I'll see you tomorrow Naruto said as he got up and started walking down the tree, stopping only to watch Gamakichi dispel. Naruto carefully snuck back to the orphanage, not letting anyone see him, when he reached the orphanage he was quickly spotted by the matron, she ran over and grabbed him by the ear, pulling him painfully as she screamed at him. Where were you, you ungrateful little duh, brat, I should tan your hide for this, what were you thinking sneaking out of the orphanage? Just for this you are going to your room with no food, if I ever find you doing it again it will be two days, do you understand? Tears started leaking from Naruto's eyes, but I didn't do anything wrong. What did you say, never mind I don't want to know she said as she threw him into his room and locked his door. Naruto lay on his bed, crying into his pillow, wondering what he had done to deserve such treatment, eventually he fell asleep and woke up in his mindscape. Mindscape Naru-chan, Kushina said to him kindly, a friendly voice being the balm he really needed, he ran into her arms crying, Naru-chan what's wrong? She asked as she saw his face. The matron was being mean again, you would think people would be nice to me on my birthday like they are to the other kids, but they never are. It's okay Naru-chan, no matter what happens I will always love you, never doubt that, if you ever need help just come to me and I'll do whatever I can. Naruto looked up at her, tears finally stopping, Gamakichi said almost the same thing when I talked to him. Then he is a good friend, yeah, he is, they sat there for a long time with Kushina just holding Naruto in a comforting hug on her lap, well Naru-chan, do you want to work on the Uzumaki sealing method? I'll tell you what makes it so special. Really, what is it? Naruto asked, tears forgotten and excitement back in his voice. Remember when you read that scroll on jutsu theory? It said that if someone becomes really good with a particular jutsu it is possible to perform with fewer hand seals, or if you become really really good with none. Yeah, it said something about how a shinobi memorizes how to mold the chakra after doing the jutsu enough times making it possible to perform the technique with fewer hand seals. Very good Kushina said while thinking that is even better than I could explain it. So, to truly master the Uzumaki sealing method, the first step is to be able to use the jutsu with no hand seals. A true master can just slam their hand on the ground while molding their chakra and the seal is deployed, that is how it is possible to use in battle, so the next step for you would take off the first hand seal and perform the jutsu, when you get good enough to use it as well with only three hand seals as you can with four you take another hand seal off and perform it with two, then when you can do it with no hand seals you have the jutsu mastered. That is awesome, Databio, Naruto said before pausing, deep in thought, but Ka-chan, do I have to use my hands? What do you mean Naru-chan? Well, you know how I've been working on the tree walking exercise. Yes, well, I'm really good at it now and I kind of got bored, so I did some cool stuff like sitting and laying on the wall in different ways, I even tried walking up the wall on my hands, the chakra part wasn't that hard but I need to be stronger to do it well but I was thinking about how you said I would eventually be able to mold the chakra through my hands with no hand seals, but instead of my hands could I do it through my feet? You know I'm not sure, how about this you master doing it through your hands first, then you can try through your feet, but that is a really good idea, if it works you could deploy seals by just walking, thinking about it, you could even deploy trap seals by just thinking about it as you tree hop. Okay Ka Chan, I'm going to try it with three seals now Naruto said before making the last three seal in the series and slamming his hands on the ground, the jutsu still worked but the kanji that appeared was so blurry he could barely make it out, quite a bit worse than his first attempt with the full sequence, but it did work so with enough practice he would perfect this too. Naruto was just about to start again when he felt himself start to fade, in a bit of a panic he ran to Kushina and asked Ka-chan I feel like him fading, what is going on? Someone is probably trying to wake you up in the real world, meditate and concentrate on leaving your mindscape Kushina said calmly to reassure Naruto. Orphanage the matron was mad, almost beyond belief. 
that demon had managed to sneak out, on today of all days. And it had the gall to ask what he had done wrong when it showed back up. She had sent it to its room without food as punishment, but when she went to check it was still there, it was just sleeping peacefully, without a care in the world, to make it even worse, when it turned over it had a fox-like grin on its face, she was practically seeing red when she started kicking it awake, after the third kick it hopped up and she grabbed it by the hair and dragged him out of the orphanage and threw it in the street. A demon like you is no longer welcome here she spat, slamming the gate in its face. In front of the orphanage gate Naruto found sitting on his butt in front of the gate, his ribs still aching where he figured the matron kicked him, he didn't know what to do or why the matron was so angry, why did she call me a demon anyway? And what should I do? He thought to himself. Then he remembered what the old Hockage said the day before about having a long council meeting, he realized that the Hockage would probably still be there so he took off running toward what he had been told was the Hockage Tower. As he ran toward the tower he ran into someone who stepped right in front of him, the man had a big belly and a really bad and sharp smell hovering around him. Sorry, the man said until he got a good look at Naruto then his face transformed, it's the demon brat. From behind the man he heard a couple more voices, the demon, get him he can finally get what he deserves. When he bumped into the man he was scared but upon hearing those voices he just started running, shouts following, he could hear more and more people running after him and it just drove him to run faster. He ran and ran becoming more tired by the second, wondering when the people would stop chasing him, then his luck finally ran out as he ran into an alley only to find it was a dead end, by this point he was too scared to think anything and he completely forgot could just run up the wall, Turning around he looked into the faces of the mob and he finally understood what hatred looked like, he swore that if he got out of this alive he would never have a look like that on his face. Finally having enough the strong smelling man started running toward him with a broken bottle raised. Hokage offers Sarutobi Haruzen, the Kami no Shinobi, god of Shinobi, the professor, and the Sandemi Hokage had just sat down in his office after a long and tiring council meeting when his door slammed open. Immediately put on guard he looked up and saw Hitaki Kakashi aka the Anbu Inu. What is the matter Inu? I thought you were supposed to be guarding Naruto. That is just it Hokage Sama. I sent the rest of my team to scope out the orphanage a little while ago, but when I went to check on Naruto he wasn't there and I couldn't sense his presence anywhere in the orphanage, I came here as quickly as I could Inu spat out quickly. Damn the Hokage said as he got up and immediately went to a shelf where a crystal ball was resting, taking down the orb. He focused chakra on it and pictured Naruto, fuck he continued as soon as he saw what was in the orb, Inu, weasel, come with me, hurry we don't have much time. Sir both Inu and the weasel masked Anbu said as he appeared. Dead end alley just as the bottle was about to hit him the man holding it flew backward, in his place the old Hokage stood, the Hokage turned around and picked Naruto up in a hug before flaring his killing intent at the small mob, causing instant silence. What do you fools think you were doing? he shouted into the silence. The drunken man stood up and spoke not thinking or realizing his life was on the line, we was Zhu Duan for the lil demon Wa should have been Don when he was born, and with that slurred speech he had signed his death warrant, and the cheer from the rest of the crowd they had followed suit. Weasel, knock them all out and take them to Ibuki, make sure they get the original punishment the Hokage said in a very commanding voice. Sir the masked man with black hair hanging down his back in a ponytail. Now identified as Weasel said before making several hand seals, every person in the crowd suddenly collapsed, then he made a strange hand seal and there were seven of him, they each picked up two people and disappeared with fourteen out of the twenty-six people lying unconscious leaving behind raven feathers that disappeared when they touched the ground, a few seconds later five of him reappeared and took the rest of the people. Who is he Gigi? Naruto suddenly said surprising the Hokage who thought he had fallen asleep when Itachi used his genjutsu. Turning to look Naruto in the eyes he gasped, having never looked into Naruto's eyes at night before, he had never seen them when they were slitted, he is one of the Anbu that work directly under me, you can tell they are Anbu by the masks they wear, but how are you still awake Naruto? What do you mean Gigi? Well, Weasel just used a genjutsu that should have put you to sleep like all of those people. What's genjutsu? Naruto asked, curious how it could have put him to sleep. It is a ninja art that affects the mind, it can do things like put people to sleep, make you see things that are not there, or make you not see things that are there, among other things. You mean like that Ambu guy that was in the tree outside the orphanage, when I normally looked at the tree I didn't see anything but when I really concentrated I saw some blue light and when I looked even closer there was a guy with a mask in it, it was weird though, 
It didn't have cool designs. It was blank white except for the kanji NE on the forehead, Naruto said, immediately feeling the temperature drop around him. It suddenly went back to normal when he started shivering. Yes, that could be a Genjutsu too, but he wasn't an Anbu. If you see another one of them tell me okay. Sure Gigi, now Naruto tell me why you weren't in the orphanage, the professor said in a serious voice. The matron kicked me out and said to never come back. She said a demon like you is no longer welcome here, then slammed the gate in my face. Why would she do that? I don't know. She and the other ladies were all looking at me with eyes that were beyond angry this morning so I snuck out and climbed one or the big trees in the park Naruto said remembering to keep Gamakichi and his ability to use chakra a secret. When I went back to the orphanage she swooped down on me and grabbed me by the hair, she dragged me back to my room and said I had to stay there and I couldn't have dinner, I cried into my pillow for a few minutes before I fell asleep, I woke up when she started kicking me in the ribs, and then she dragged me out of the orphanage and threw me on the street and slammed the gate in my face. The Hokage's scowl deepened even further, then what happened? I bumped into that bad-smelling man and he called me a demon brat, a couple other people heard him and started shouting, they were scary and I started running and as I ran more people started chasing me, I just ran until I found myself here and then you arrived. Thank you for telling that to me Naruto, would you like to stay with me a couple of days, at least until I find somewhere for you to live? The old Hokage asked. That would be great Gigi, Naruto said excitedly, but how did that guy turn into so many people and how he disappear, was it a shunshun like you used? Can I learn that too? Yes, Weasel used a shunshun like I did yesterday. To make the copies of himself he used a technique called Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone technique. And if you want to learn those techniques you have to become a shinobi the kindly old man said. If I become a shinobi would I be able to protect myself from people like them? Naruto asked as he turned to where the mob had been then back to the hockage. Of course you would. No normal civilian like those people can defeat a shinobi. In that case can you teach me to be a shinobi Gigi? No I can't, Haruzan said but quickly continued when he saw Naruto's downcast face, but I can enter you in the ninja academy starting the semester after you turn six, how about that? Yatta, that would be awesome, but what would I do until then? Well, after I get you an apartment, you could start training your body, if you do that you will be ahead when you start at the academy. Okay. But how would I train my body? Naruto asked while thinking I know I will be stronger than most people my age, but I don't think I should increase the gravity seal beyond the increases it already makes. Maybe I could use some of the exercises from a guide to physical development necessary for youthful taijutsu which has good advice, despite the weird name, and hopefully Gigi will give me an excuse to know about them in the first place so I can start doing them without drawing attention. Well some of the common exercises include running long distances to build endurance and strength in your legs. Push-ups and pull-ups to build upper body strength, sit-ups to build abdominal strength, and squats to build leg strength. Those are just some of the ones I can think of off the top of my head. Maybe you could learn some more at the library. If you do that you could also look for some type of taijutsu to use to protect yourself the Hokage said, taking his question seriously. Well, enough of that for now. How about you stay in my office tonight and tomorrow we'll find an apartment for you. Naruto's face stretched into his trademark foxy grin until he started yawning, okay Gigi. Haruzan turned to the remaining Anbu, this one with gravity defying silver hair, Inu you can go call off your team and join me in my office, Naruto will be staying there tonight. Yes sir the dog masked Anbu said and disappeared. Hold on tight Naruto. We are about to move very fast Haruzan told the blonde child and as if to take a page out of the ANBU's book they disappeared in a puff of smoke. Hokage's office after arriving at his office Haruzan put Naruto on the couch and he immediately went to sleep. Haruzan sat in his chair thinking about the night's events, wondering what he should do. After sitting like that for nearly half an hour he makes up his mind, he knew. Yes sir the dog masked and said as he appeared in front of his leader. First thing tomorrow I want you to go and find an apartment that Naruto can live in, make sure it is neither too expensive nor too run down, I will arrange for the rent to be covered, you might want to look in one of Jiraiya's buildings, you know he won't refuse to have Naruto live there. Yes sir he said before fading from view, mindscape. Running up to his mother again, he threw himself in her arms again, crying. Naru-chan what's wrong? She asked gently as she ran her fingers through his hair. After calming down he told he what had happened since he left his mindscape, just like with the old hockage he felt himself go cold but he could also tell that whatever it was it wasn't aimed at him. Ka-chan, 
why did it seem like so much time passed when I was here last time when only a little over an hour passed in the real world? Naruto asked to distract her. What do you mean Naru-chan? Well, we talked for a long time then I worked on the seal jutsu for about 6 hours but when I woke it had been less than 2 hours in the real world, I could tell because it wasn't dark enough for my eyes to activate. I'm not sure, but maybe, you might be able to control how quickly time passes in here like the Tsukiyomi, moon reader, of the Uchiha clan where they draw you into their mindscape and they can keep you for 3 days while only taking a few seconds in the real world, she said drifting off until she finally registered everything he said, wait, what do you mean your eyes activate? Well, I've always been able to see at night like it was day. But a few days ago when I was sticking to the wall in my room I noticed some chakra was trickling to my eyes Naruto explained, when I stopped it everything went darker than I had ever seen before, I lost concentration and fell back onto the floor and suddenly I could see again, so I tried channeling chakra to my eyes again the next day and everything became really clear and I could see things I had never noticed before, I think I could even see chakra and through Jinjutsu. Show me, so Naruto did as Kushina asked and channeled chakra to his eyes, his blue eyes stayed the same except the pupils became slits, that is pretty cool. I wish I could have done that. What do you mean Ka-chan? Naruto asked curiously. Next time you are in front of a mirror activate them and look for yourself. Okay I will, Naruto said before his expression turned serious, Ka-chan, could you teach me to be a shinobi? Of course, but why the sudden request? Well, Gigi said that I can join the academy after I turn 6, I want to be strong and protect both myself and anyone I care about like him, and maybe one day become Hokage too. Ha 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 ha, you sound just like I did, my dream was always to become the first female Hokage, I will teach you, but there is one thing you must remember. What is that? Naruto asked, still serious, one of the most important things for a shinobi is deception Kushina said, just as serious. Why? Think of it like this. If there were two people that were equally as strong but one always hid their strength, what would the second person do? The second person probably would nt take the first seriously. Exactly, the second person would underestimate the first and most likely lose, possibly even die depending on the situation, my point is that I will teach you but you should hide your abilities, it will make it much more likely that you can win and survive, it is especially important for you Kushina finished. Why is that, why is it important for me? Naruto asked catching his mother's slip. I can't tell you right now, but I promise I will as soon as your father wakes up. Okay Naruto answered dejectedly, since we are going to be training what should I do in the real world? Hmm for now how about you start with that old monkey suggested, luckily you can learn taijutsu here as muscle memory is a mental capacity so you don't have to worry about that, but you might want to do what that book on physical exercises suggests so you can use the taijutsu that I teach you effectively. He'll do that but it should actually be easier now. Kushina tilted her head in confusion, why is that? Well, Gigi mentioned getting me my own apartment so I won't have to worry about ladies that don't like me stopping me, Naruto smiled brightly, I'll be able to go to the park whenever I want and maybe I can make some friends my own age. Kushina smiled at the happy look on Naruto's face, okay, until your father wakes up we will split your time here into three sections, learning to make seals since you are now able to use the Uzumaki sealing method, practicing the Uzumaki sealing jutsu until you can do it with no hand seals and maybe with your feet, and taijutsu training, you better be prepared because I won't go easy on you, if you are going to do something as dangerous as be a shinobi I will make sure you are ready for it. As Naruto woke up on the couch in the Hokage's office he heard voices of the Hokage and his dog masked Anbu talking. Jiraiya's buildings first like you suggested and quickly found one, it is three rooms, bedroom, kitchen, living room, and bathroom, it is reasonably priced and in good condition. Good the Hokage replied, you will take us there when Naruto wakes up, I take that back, he is waking up as we speak, good morning Naruto. Good morning Gigi, so Naruto, do you remember how I said we would find you an apartment to live in? Naruto smiled, of course I do Gigi, well would you like to see it? The old man asked as he got up from his chair. Really Gigi? Let's go Naruto the Hokage said before turning to the AMBU, lead the way Inu. They left the Hokage Tower with the dog masked Anbu leading the way, walking in silence for several minutes until the old man broke it. Naruto do you see that building over there? He asked pointing to strangely shaped building with four curving columns rising from the roof and the kanji for fire on the front. Naruto looked where the old man was pointing, sure what is it? That is the academy, 
the place I told you I would enroll you so you can learn to become a shinobi. So that is where I will learn what I need to know to become a shinobi, thanks for telling me Gigi. Several minutes passed as they continued to walk down the street, look here Naruto, you are lucky, Ichiraku Ramen is right on the way from your apartment to the academy. Yatta, I can have ramen every day now Naruto shouted excitedly. How close to the apartment are we anyway Inu? The Hokage asked seeing Naruto's happiness. We are just a few blocks away, I found a place relatively close to the academy so he would not have to go too far to get there considering he will be starting next year Inu said. Very good, I guess Naruto just got lucky enough for it to be close to Ichiraku too. A couple blocks further down the street they came to a slightly run down apartment building and Inu in and led him to the manager's room, knocking on the door he stepped back, waiting for the door to open. A rather nondescript brown haired, black eyed, man that appeared to be in his mid thirties came out of the room and looked at the three, Hokage Sama, Inu san how can I help you? Inu stepped forward again, Kenji san, could you please show us the empty apartment you showed me earlier? My pleasure. Right this way Kenji said casting a non-judgmental glance at Naruto. So Kenji-san, how have you been doing? I haven't seen you in several years the old Hokage asked Kenji like someone catching up with an old friend. Kenji answered as they started following him, very good, I am doing quite well since I retired, I liked being a Chunin but I like this as well. I'm glad to hear that Kenji-san the Hokage said as they went up two sets of stairs and down a hallway, stopping at the third door on the right. Here we are. Apartment 305 Kenji said as he unlocked the door. Go on in Naruto, tell me what you think, Naruto went in. Taking off his shoes before passing through a 10-foot white-walled entryway. He emerged in a room with a small kitchen including refrigerator and a small pantry to the left and a couple comfortable chairs facing a small TV along with a small square table for eating on the right. Walking past the table he entered another passage, this one with two doors, Entering the door on the left side he found a modest bathroom with a sink and mirror combination, a toilet, and a bath with a shower, leaving the bathroom and closing the door he walked down to the end of the passage and opened the door, walking into the last room he found it to be a bedroom with a low bed right under the window on the right wall, a dresser on the left and a small closet on the far side. Naruto ran back to where the hockage was standing and threw his arms around the old man, thank you Gigi, thank you, this place is amazing. Haruzan laughed at Naruto's antics, glad the boy was happy, I'm glad you like it Naruto, now let's go get you all of the stuff you will need to live here he said before turning back to Kenji, Kenji-san we will take this apartment, I will be back later to arrange rent, then accepted the key from Kenji and handed it to Naruto. Leaving Naruto's new apartment the three headed to a nearby store, they get soap, shampoo, a toothbrush, toothpaste, and groceries before heading back to the apartment to drop everything off and put the groceries in the refrigerator and pantry. Heading out again they went to a store that sold everything needed to furnish homes, once there they headed to the bath section and Naruto picked out some red towels, his mother's hair, and purple washcloths, Gamakichi's markings, next they headed to the bed section he picked out a pillow, plain white sheets, and a navy blue comforter for his bed, then they headed to the cleaning section and the hockage picked out the cleaning supplies that he would need. Okay Naruto, is there anything else you want? The Hokage asked as they walked to pay for everything they had picked out. I don't think, wait what about clothes and some new shoes? Naruto asked lifting up his shoes to show that the souls had worn to almost nothing. Good idea my boy, let's pay for this and we can go find you some clothes, Inu can you go get some shinobi sandals that will fit him, they are made of better materials and will likely last longer, make sure to get him some a couple sizes too big, they are made so he can strap them tight to fit bring them to Naruto's apartment when you are done. Yes sir, the dog mask man said before walking away. After their purchase was completed, the hockage took out a scroll and adding chakra to it, all of the bags disappeared in a puff of smoke just leaving the scroll. Naruto's eyes became as wide as sources, Gigi, is that a storage scroll? I had heard about them, but that was awesome, I wonder if I could learn how to do that. Yes Naruto, this is a storage scroll, I'm sure you could learn how to use them once you start at the academy, you just have to be able to use chakra to do it. Once I learn how to use chakra what do I do? Naruto asked almost vibrating in excitement. The Hokage looked thoughtful as if deciding what he should say. Then his face relaxed thinking it was harmless information. Once you can use chakra, you hold the storage scroll really close to what you want to seal and channel chakra to the seal while concentrating on the item or items you want to seal. Once you get that far just say Fuan. 
seal, and to get the stuff out again channel chakra and say Fuan Kai, seal release, if you get really good at using storage scrolls all you have to do is channel chakra and think either Fuan or Fuan Kai. That is awesome. There is so much you could do with those scrolls Naruto said, nearly vibrating again. Yes there is, storage scrolls are one of the most useful tools a shinobi can have the old hockage said seriously, then he gave Naruto the scroll with all of his new stuff, you can hold on to this, okay Naruto. Okay GG, they walked out of the store the hockage following Naruto, let's go get you some clothes then. They eventually went to a clothing store and bought Naruto some knee length shorts in navy blue, black and dark red, some white and grey t-shirts, and some toad boxes. When they got back to Naruto's apartment, they found the dog masked and boo waiting for them. Good job Inu, let's go in and Naruto can try on the sandals. They entered the apartment and Naruto put his new clothes into the bedroom with the scroll holding his stuff. He changed into some of his new clothes, a navy pair of shorts and a white t-shirt with a blue spiral on the back, then he went back out and sat on one of the comfortable chairs in the living room area, while Haruzan sat on the other, now Naruto, just slip your feet in the sandals and tighten the straps until they fit comfortably but don't shift on your feet. Naruto did as told and found the shinobi sandals to be much more comfortable than his old worn out shoes, thanks Gigi, these are much better than my old shoes. Good, they are made for shinobi so they will last much longer than normal shoes even if you train like a maniac, these sandals are also a bit bigger than your feet so you will have some room to grow before you have to get a new pair that is why you had to tighten the straps so much. Running to the hockage, Naruto gave him another hug, thanks Gigi he said in a heartfelt voice. You are welcome Naruto, there is one more thing that we have to talk about before I leave, I will be giving you an allowance once every two weeks, it will be enough to last for those two weeks with a little left over if you don't waste it, to get this allowance you just have to come see me in the hockage tower, do you remember where it is? Of course, I just go back to Ichiraku Ramen and follow that street until I get almost to the academy then I turn onto the street I which I can see the tower down. Very good Naruto, the Hokage said before handing Naruto an envelope, here is your first allowance, you will get this until you are considered an adult, that means that if you become a shinobi, until you become a genin. Haruzan got up and went to leave only stopping to wave when he heard Naruto say thanks Gigi, I will see you in two weeks. See you in two weeks my boy, and with that Naruto was left alone in his apartment. Thinking back on the past couple of days he started cursing to himself, all of the books he was studying right now were still in his room in the orphanage, how was he going to get them back? He definitely couldn't go there himself and he didn't want anyone to know how far ahead he really was, wait, couldn't go himself, but, Gamakichi. Biting his right thumb he smeared blood across the summoning seal on the back of his left hand, a plume of smoke appeared and when it cleared Gamakichi was standing there. Hey Naruto, how's it going? Gamakichi asked before he started looking around, and where are we anyway? Hey Kichi, everything is going great. This is my new apartment. I finally don't have to go back to the orphanage anymore. Naruto answered in good spirits. That's great, but how did it happen? Well, after you dispelled I went back to the orphanage and the mean matron threw me in my room, I fell asleep and went to see mom until the matron kicked me awake. She kicked you awake, wait, wait. Wait you said you went to see your mom, what do you mean by that Gamakichi said as he started to feel afraid. Well, Ka-chan said that she was dead but before she died a caged bunch of her was sealed in my mindscape, she was asleep until I started producing enough chakra for to survive, she woke up recently and has been teaching me about seals, my two san is sealed there too but he is still asleep and Ka-chan won't tell me about him until he wakes up. Well damn. Doesn't that just make a good story he said extremely relieved that Naruto wasn't calling the Kyuubi Ka-chan, what happened next? She kicked me out on the street and told me I wasn't welcome back, then I ran into this guy that smelled like bad rice and him and other people started chasing me, they chased me into a corner and were about to hurt me when Gigi and two guys, Ambu he called them, stopped them, I slept in Gigi's office and this morning he got me this apartment. Wow, well I like the new place, why did you summon me? Well. Would it be possible for you to summon yourself back to my room in the orphanage? Naruto asked with hope. Considering the number of times I've been there, yeah I think so, Gamakichi replied. Can you go there and get the books that I hid under that loose board beneath my futon? I see, sure I can but it might take a while, summon me back tomorrow and I'll have them. Thanks Kichi, I'll see you tomorrow, I'm going to go exploring. Mountain, Mayaboku as soon as he arrived home Gamakichi ran off to find his father, 
it took a while but it wasn't that difficult to find a ten-story toad. Pops Pops he shouted, what's wrong Kichi? Gamabunta asked when he heard his son's voice. I've got big news Pops Gamakichi said taking a few deep breaths, Naruto has met his mother. His mother? Gamabunta said before his pipe fell out of his mouth, making the ground shake when it hit, don't tell me the Kyuubi. No Pops, it isn't the Kyuubi Gamakichi said quickly, that is what I thought at first too, Naruto told me that a caged bunchen of her and his father was sealed inside his mindscape, they were sealed in some sort of sleep until he started making enough chakra to sustain him. He said his mother awoke a little while ago but his father was still frozen and that she would nt tell him anything about him until he awoke. What a stubborn bastard. H a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a That is brilliant. Who better to teach the kid than his own parents, back from the dead just for him. Ha ha. I got to go pops. I promised Naruto I would go get his stuff from his old rooms so he doesn't draw too much attention with the books he is reading. Go ahead. I don't mind you helping him out. Okay see you later Pops Gamakichi said before summoning himself back to Naruto's old room and retrieving his books. Naruto's apartment deciding to take care of everything else later and secretly happy that he had managed to keep the Hokage's storage scroll to study later, Naruto left his apartment locking the door on the way out. Walking away from his apartment he was memorizing his surroundings so he could easily find his way back, Naruto was looking for a couple things to start with, a body of water he could use to learn water walking, a park with other kids his age, someplace private to start training his body, and a couple of stores that were close to his apartment. As luck would have it he found the water first even if it was too open to use for water walking if he wanted to keep his abilities a secret. It was a large pond right outside of a wall compound with a red and white fan-like emblem all over the place, the pond had a small pier sticking out over the water and there was someone his age sitting at the end. Naruto walked over to the pier and saw that the boy had pale skin and black hair that stuck up at a weird angle in the back, as Naruto walked toward the boy he turned and looked at him with a smile. Hi, who are you? My name is Uchiha Sasuke the boy, Uchiha Sasuke said in a cheerful voice. Taken aback at the kindness Sasuke was showing it took a few seconds before he could answer, Hi, I'm Uzumaki Naruto. Are you new around here? I've never seen you before Sasuke asked curious about the boy that he had never seen before. Yeah, I just moved into an apartment a bit closer to the ninja academy, I was just out exploring when I saw you here Naruto answered, swept up by the boy's cheerful attitude. That is cool, who do you live with? Your mother, your father. No I live alone, my parents are dead, Gigi got me the apartment when the mean matron kicked me out of the orphanage Naruto replied in a sad voice. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you sad, it's okay, I've got a nice place to live and I get to enter the ninja academy next year so I'm actually doing a lot better now. You are so lucky, my parents won't let me enter the academy for two more years, two more years until I can start catching up to Aniki, elder brother, and make my two san proud Sasuke said envy apparent on his face. Just as Naruto was about to say something, a new voice rang out, Sasuke. Sasuke snapped around on hearing the voice, Aniki he said jumping to his feet. Seeing Sasuke running toward the other person Naruto got to his feet and not able to see the other person well considering how far away he was channeled chakra to his eyes, he was immediately able to make out the new person. He looked a lot like an older version of Sasuke except with longer hair that fell down his back in a ponytail. Walking toward the brothers he could hear their conversation. Sasuke what are you doing today? The man asked, I was just sitting on the pier, enjoying the day. I see, who is your friend? Turning back to the pier Sasuke saw Naruto walking toward them, let me introduce to my new friend, this is Uzumaki Naruto, he continued as Naruto came to stand next to him, Naruto, this is my Aniki, Uchiha Itachi. Itachi walked up to Naruto and mussed his hair, which immediately went back to normal, nice to meet you Naruto kun Itachi said, as Naruto heard his voice up close he recognized it as the man form the night before, Weasel. Are you? Itachi stopped him noticing that Naruto recognized him. Just a second, Sasuke, Ka-san is looking for you, don't make her wait Itachi said to Sasuke leaning down and lightly flicking his forehead with his index finger. Okay, okay I'm going Sasuke returned before running off. I was quite surprised to see you Naruto-kun, and before you ask yes I am the one you met last night. How did you know I was going to ask about that? Naruto asked amazed at the person in front of him. When you recognize me it showed on your face, 
Before anything else, when you see Embu in mask you address them according to their mask, but when you see one without a mask like now you address them by name. Il remember that? Thanks, how did you recognize me anyway? Atachi asked, curious. Your voice and your hairstyle? I noticed your hair was similar, but when I heard your voice up I figured it out. I see, that is very impressive for someone your age. Thanks Atachi-san, you are very welcome Naruto-kun, so what did you think of my Ototo, little brother? Naruto pondered for a second, he seems really nice, much nicer than anyone in the orphanage, but I only met him a couple minutes ago. I'm glad you think so, Itachi said before becoming serious, please, no matter what happens, try to be his friend, I'm afraid he will have a hard time pleasing our father and he will need all the friends he can get. Sure Itachi Nisan, I'll do what I can, Nisan, hum, I think I like it Itachi said as he got up to leave, thanks Naruto-kun. After Itachi left, he got up and started exploring again, he decided to look for a different place to learn water walking, considering that there are a bunch of small rivers that run through Kanoa, if I were to follow the wall I bet I could find one to use and not worry about being found. His mind made up he continued following the street that had brought him to the pond and after only a couple minutes arrived at the wall surrounding Kanoa, following the wall he came to a small clearing with a river running through it, the river widened briefly as it went through the clearing making a pond-like area to practice on. Perfect, it has the water to practice water walking, trees and a small clearing to exercise in, this is exactly what I was looking for, and even better, it doesn't look like anyone has come here in a long time so I don't have to worry about privacy. Naruto said to himself, very happy with his new training area, okay time to go home, my training starts tomorrow. Heading back toward his apartment, Naruto decided to take another route wanting to explore some more and learn to find his training area without walking all the way along the wall, he passed a park as he went and decided to take a look at it the next day a little after lunch, it was starting to near dinner time so no one was at the park. Naruto's apartment when he got back to his apartment he unlocked the door and went in to get something to eat, only to realize that he had no idea how to make any food. What should I do? Naruto thought, I know I can ask Kar-chan later, wait Kar-chan had me meditate to leave the mindscape yesterday, maybe I can meditate to get in too, no I can try that later, I'm hungry now, and what to do? Wait, I can have Ichiraku ramen tonight, then ask mom to teach me how to cook later. Mind made up he quickly left his apartment and went to Ichiraku ramen, luckily it was very close. Ichiraku ramen the second he entered Ichiraku he found himself swept up in a crushing hug, like usual, after struggling for a few seconds he finally freed himself from our army and started breathing again, much to Tuka's amusement. So kid, what are you doing here today? You usually come with the hockage about once every month or two. Hi Chuchi Oji San, well until last night I lived in the orphanage, but now I've got an apartment a few blocks from here Naruto said, never noticing the ramen stall owner's sharp glance at him. So what happened to bring this about? Chuchi asked. The matron kicked me out of the orphanage and Hokage Gigi got me an apartment to live in. I see, Chuchi said waving off a comment that he could see his daughter was about to ask, realizing that Naruto was skipping a lot with his statement but deciding against asking, well, in that case your first bowl is on the house in honor of you moving nearby, what would you like kid? Can I have one miso, one beef, and one of your choice, please? Chuchi walked back into the kitchen, after a few minutes he called out, Ayami, one miso, come get it. Ayami went to the back door and grabbed a steaming bowl and set it in front of him, here is one bowl of miso ramen, the beef ramen will be out in a few minutes, just after you are done with that. Thanks Ayami Nei-chan, you're welcome Naruto-kun. Breaking his chopsticks apart he said itataki mass and began eating, still trying to emulate the hokage's elegant way of eating, before long his empty bowl was swept away and replaced by a bowl of beef ramen, the beef ramen followed quickly after the miso. When Ayami came back this time she placed down a type of ramen he had never tired, one pork ramen, this type is my favorite, enjoy your ramen Naruto-kun. I always do, thanks Ayami Nei-chan, taking a bite of the new type of ramen, Naruto immediately liked it, this is great. Ayami and Chuchi, who had come back out of the kitchen, smiled at Naruto's evident enjoyment. Leaving his money on the counter like he had seen the hockage do, Naruto stood up, thanks Ayami Nei-chan, Chuchi Oji-san see you later. By Naruto, see you later they both said, leaving the ramen stand, Naruto quickly made his way back to his apartment. Naruto's apartment once he got back to his apartment he went to his bedroom and put his new clothes away, 
Then he unsealed his sheets and bath stuff, though it took a couple tries, with all of his new stuff spread around him. He grabbed the towels and washcloths and put him away in the bathroom. Next he went back to the kitchen and grabbed the soap, shampoo, toothbrush and toothpaste which he had left there after bring the food back and put them in the bathroom. Finally finished putting the bathroom in order he brushed his teeth before going to the bedroom. There he made the bed with his new sheets and laid down, falling asleep in moments. Mindscape Naruto walked toward the house where his mom stayed in the Mindscape, thinking how he was going to tell her what had throughout the day, by the time he actually reached the house he had made up his mind. Ka-chan where are you? Ka-chan? Not receiving a response, Naruto started exploring the house, finally finding his mother in the room he originally found her, she was looking at the pillar that was his father, it was almost clear like Kushina's was when he first woke her but was still cloudy enough that he couldn't make out his father, he ran up to Kushina and hugged her, hi Ka-chan, I'm back. I can see that Naru-chan, how was your day? My day was great. Gigi got me this awesome apartment, I love it. It has a kitchen and living room. A bathroom, and a bedroom with a bed, a dresser, and a closet. Then Gigi and this dog-masked Anbu took me to get stuff to eat and soap and shampoo, we dropped that off at my apartment then we went to get towels and sheets which Gigi sealed in a storage scroll, it was really cool to watch and I got to keep the scroll, Gigi completely forgot about it, I thought it could come in handy, Gigi also took me to get some clothes while he sent dog sand to grab me some shinobi sandals, he said they would last me longer Naruto finished in a rush. That's great Naru-chan, did anything else happen? Kushina asked, curious. Yeah, after Gigi left I went exploring, I found a small pond with a pier next to what has to be the Uchiha compound. It had red and white fan things all over the wall, I made a friend, it was a really nice and cheerful boy named Uchiha Sasuke, we talked for a few minutes until his brother, Hitachi came and told him his mom needed him, oh yeah, Hitachi was the weasel Anbu from last night. You met Ita-chan and Sasuke-chan, Kushina exclaimed. You know them Ka-chan? Well I know Hitachi. His mother was one of my best friends, the last time I saw her Sasuke had just been born, what else happened? Well after Itachi Ni explained about Anbu I decided to find some place where I could practice water walking, I walked along the outer wall until I found a perfect clearing with one of the rivers running through it, the river widened in the clearing forming a small pond-like area, it didn't look like anyone had been there in a very long time. It is perfect for training and physical exercises, after that I took a different path home and saw a park along the way, I'm going to go there tomorrow and try to make some more friends. It sounds like you had a really exciting day Naru-chan, you did a good job making a friend, good luck making some more tomorrow Kushina said congratulating and encouraging Naruto to keep trying at the same time. Oh yeah, I almost forgot, can you teach me how to cook Ka-chan? Of course I can, I'm actually a very good cook, one thing though, can I have permission to change the mindscape however I need to? What do you mean? Naruto replied, not understanding. Well, this is your mindscape and you showed the ability to control it by making time pass more slowly, in fact, from now on, whenever you come here concentrate on making time pass quickly at least compared to the real world, since you can manipulate this place I'm asking for your permission to do so as well, otherwise I won't be able to show you how to cook since I won't be able to get ingredients, at least that is my theory as I haven't been able to manipulate the mindscape before. If you want to you can change this part of my mindscape however you want, I give you my permission if it will help. Alright, let's go to the kitchen and see if this will work, until you get good enough at cooking we will postpone your lessons in sealing and your practice of the Uzumaki sealing method, just so you know I still expect you to read the books on sealing and practice the sealing jutsu when you are resting from physical exercises Kushina said with a glint in her eyes. Okay Ka-chan. The only reason I didn't do any reading today is because I had to ask Kichi to summon himself back to my old room and grab the books I hid there. Good, then we are going to split our time between cooking and learning the basics of Taijutsu, now, to the kitchen. When they got to the kitchen, they found that Kushina could indeed manipulate the mindscape now that she had Naruto's permissions so she immediately started teaching him the basics of cooking. After they finished that, with Naruto being able to make miso and rice for a simple breakfast as well as eggs and bacon if he wants to eat something different, they went outside where Kushina made some training posts appear, they were just simple logs sticking out of the ground with rope wrapped around them. Before we start, there will be several things that you will have to do again in the real world, one purpose of these training posts is to give you something to hit your knuckles against to build up callus. You will have to do that in the real world, 
another is to build the muscles you will need to put power and speed behind your punches. While you can learn taijutsu and muscle memory here, you can't work your actual muscles, I am going to teach you my style of taijutsu even if your fathers would fit you better than mine, basically what I will teach you to start with are the basics, how to punch, how to kick, how to dodge or block your opponent's attacks, these are all things that should be taught in the academy, things that are the building blocks, the starting point to more advanced styles, do you understand? Kushina asked after she finished her lecture yes. Okay, let's begin with. For the remainder of Naruto's time in the mindscape Kushina drilled him mercilessly, making him punch and kick the posts time and time again, correcting his form and showing him how to make his attacks more effective until he hit correctly every time. Like Kushina asked when he was telling her about his day he willed time to move more quickly in the mindscape than the real world, despite it being his first attempt he managed to stay in the mindscape for what felt like it was almost 12 hours, almost a third more time than should have been possible. The next day remembering his promise to continue his reading, the first thing he did was summon Gamakichi and retrieve his books. When he received his books he just looked at Gamakichi and said thanks before Gamakichi dispelled, going back to the summon realm. Deciding to get started, Naruto quickly made miso and rice, like his mother taught him, and went to his new training area. Once there he did everything the hokage and the guide to physical development necessary for youthful taijutsu suggested, performing more of the exercises and more quickly as the day passed, including punching and kicking a tree, which hurt more than a training post, but he made do, in between his exercises he practiced the sealing jutsu, getting to the point that the symbols were clear with three hand seals, if not as good as he would like. He also started teaching himself how to water walk, to start with he remembered how the book described the exercise. Where the tree climbing exercise emphasizes the release of chakra in a pattern of controlled bursts and releases. The water walking exercise emphasizes the constant release of chakra. To perform this exercise one must constantly release a varying amount of chakra to increase the surface tension of the water to the point where it is capable of one's weight, keep in mind that the amount of chakra necessary to do this will change depending on both the condition of the water and one's weight, if one were to try to water walk on the same body of water when it was stormy then again on a calm day or with weights on the chakra requirement would be different. While some people would just jump onto the water to while releasing chakra through their feet. Naruto sat down on a rock in the center of the stream and placed one foot on the water releasing increasing amounts of chakra while concentrating on using it to make the water thicker. Once his foot would stay on the top of the water no matter how hard he tried to push it down he moved it somewhere else to get accustomed to how each step would require differing amounts of chakra. After he got to the point that no matter where he put his foot down it would stay on top of the water without him thinking about it he switched feet and started over, when both feet would stay on top of the water he tried actually walking, and though he stumbled a couple times, he quickly got used to it. While he would like to say he mastered the exercise, once he could walk on water without thinking about it he went back to his physical exercises which he continued until it was time to stop, he still wanted to get to the park after all and if he continued any longer all of the kids would be gone again so he rinsed off his sweaty face with some water from the stream and started walking toward the park he had found the day before. At the park reaching the park Naruto saw a bunch of kids playing. And despite the fact that they weren't doing much, there were two in particular that caught his interest. The first was a boy with a slightly tannish complexion and black hair that spiked up in a wild fashion from a ponytail that started just behind the top of his head. He was wearing a greyish blue t-shirt with a circular symbol on the front and seemed to be watching the few clouds in the sky and playing a board game with his friend. His friend was a slightly pudgy boy with brown hair that spiked up almost like his own, he had spiral marks that could have been either tattoos or birthmarks on his cheeks and was constantly eating from a bag of chips, he was wearing a long-sleeved green shirt with the upper third being light green and the lower portion being dark green. Naruto walked over to where they were playing their game and watched for a few minutes, when the skinnier one won he decided to talk to them, what are you playing? The skinny one turns his apparently too lethargic or lazy to get up before talking, it is a game called shogi. How do you play? I'll show you but first what is your name? It is too troublesome to have to say hey you or hey blonde every time we try to talk. Im Uzumaki Naruto, what are your names? Naruto said liking him despite how lazy he seemed to be. Nara Shikamaru the skinny boy said not seeming to even want to put in the effort to want to say him. Im Akamichi Choji, what's your favorite food? The plump boy said. Hum, definitely ramen, Naruto replied answering Shuji's question. Hum that sounds good, I like you, I'm glad to hear that, 
Thanks Naruto said deciding that despite Shuji's fixation on food, he liked him, then he turned back to Shikamaru and listened intently as he explained the game. Those are the rules, it is too troublesome to continue Shikamaru said when he finished telling him the rules. Cool, would it be too troublesome to play a game with me? If Choji doesn't mind, that is. Go ahead Choji said, looking slightly relieved, alright, let's set up the board, I'll let you go first since this is your first time playing Shikamaru said actually looking a little serious, emphasis on little. So Naruto and Shikamaru played a game of Shogi, Shikamaru won, of course, but it was pretty close with Shikamaru making this strange hand seal where he put all of his fingers against the matching fingers of his other hand and formed a square a couple times, the second time he made it, Naruto turned to Choji and asked him what Shikamaru was doing. Ah, that, that is his thinking pose whenever he is trying to solve a difficult problem he gets in that pose, it is actually pretty impressive that you made him do it, the fact that he is doing it means that you backed him into a corner with your weird playing style, I've only ever seen him do it when he was playing his father before this. H has never had to against me, that's for sure. After that Shikamaru quickly won. When they finished with Shikamaru saying checkmate, he turned to Naruto with a look of respect, would like to play again sometime. Wow, I never thought I would see that Choji said. See what and why not? I just never thought he would actually challenge someone himself, he would usually say too troublesome or something like that. I see Naruto said before turning back to Shikamaru, Sure, I would love to play again, but where can I find you? Either here around this time or on a hill somewhere watching the clouds, at least for another couple of years, then things will get troublesome Shikamaru answered nonchalantly. What happens in a couple years? We start at the Ninja Academy Choji said before Shikamaru could say anything about it being too troublesome. Cool, I start next year, maybe we'll still be able to see each other after all, do you guys have a reason for going? Choji looked at Shikamaru before turning back to Naruto, I don't really right now, my dad along with a lot of other people in my clan are all shinobi so. I want to be a shinobi that is not too strong or too weak, the rest is just too troublesome Shikamaru said without looking away from the clouds. So you want to be mediocre? I guess sir, wow, I didn't know you were suicidal, you never know I guess. Shikamaru's head snapped to Naruto so fast it looked like it hurt, what do you mean by that? Well. Gigi once told me that any shinobi that didn't do their best and keep getting stronger was doomed to die young Naruto said, never knowing that his words would change Shikamaru forever, even if it was only a bit. Gigi, who is that? Shikamaru asked actually looking interested now. Hokage Gigi, he said that one time when we went to Ichiraku Ramen, he looked upset so I asked what was wrong, he didn't really tell me but just said Naruto promised me this. If you ever become a shinobi you will always do your best both to get stronger and hold on to the wool of fire, those that don't are doomed to die young, I didn't understand it all, but since you want to be mediocre that means you don't want to try your best you don't really want to survive. I see, I need to think about this, thanks for the game and conversation, they were interesting Shikamaru said as he walked away. Wow, I've never seen that before, usually he would just sit here and watching the clouds until someone came and picked him up. Well see you to around Shikamaru. Choji Naruto said with a wave, turning back to himself he decided to go back to training again and headed back to his training area. With Shikamaru as Shikamaru headed back to the Nara clan compound he was deep in thought, so deep he didn't even hear Choji calling him, he just couldn't get Naruto's words out of his head, or the fact that he was repeating something the Hokage had said. Arriving home he immediately went to where his father was laying on the deck of their house, Tusan, Tusan I've got a question for you. What is it Shikamaru? Nara Shikaku asked curious as to what could make his son serious. Are mediocre shinobi likely to die young? Shikaku's head snapped to his son, almost mimicking Shikamaru's action from earlier, Wa, what? What brought that up? Well, I met this interesting kid earlier today, he made me get serious in a game of shogi even though it was his first time playing. After we played for a while we eventually got to talking why we wanted to be ninja and I said that I wanted to be a shinobi that wasn't too strong or too weak. Then he asked so you want to be mediocre and I answered that I guess sir, he just looked at me and said wow, I didn't know you were suicidal, you never know I guess, I asked what he meant and he quoted the hockage if you ever become a shinobi you always do your best both to get stronger and hold on to the will of fire, those that don't are doomed to die young. Smart kid, I'll have to thank him later, and yes he is right, a mediocre shinobi has a very good chance to die young, so what is his name? Shikaku asked, respect for whoever it was growing quickly. Uzumaki Naruto, 
interesting, and you said he almost beat you in a game of shogi, he said to himself, very interesting. Two weeks later it had been two weeks since he started living in his apartment and after he made breakfast he would be out of food, so today he would have to go shopping. The two weeks had been relatively good for Naruto, the apartment manager had turned out to be pretty nice. He had even shown Naruto how to use the washing machine and dryer that were in the basement of the apartment complex, he had gotten much better at cooking under his mother's tutelage. Of course practicing for more than six hours per day would do that, he had mastered water walking and was almost ready to reduce the hand seals for the sealing jutsu again, he had played a couple more games of shogi with Shikamaru and finished reading the beginner's sealing level 3, he was actually halfway through the level 4 book. Naruto decided that he would do his shopping after finishing his training, so after ending his training session he walked back and stopped at a shopping mart to buy groceries, when he went to pay for the groceries he ran into a bit of a problem. That will be 320 ryo the cashier said with a smirk. But it should only add up to 200 ryo Naruto protested. Orphans tax has to be added in of course he said, his smirk growing even larger, Naruto was on edge, he was pretty sure that the cashier was lying, but there was nothing he could do about it at the moment. Fine Naruto said bitterly before laying 320 ryo, almost all of the allowance that Gigi had given him when he got his apartment. Taking his groceries he walked home, still trying to understand the orphan tax, he was still thinking about it as he made dinner, got ready for bed, and went to sleep. Mindscape as soon as he arrived in the mindscape he went up to his mom, a question still on his mind, Ka Chan, what is an orphan's tax? An orphan's tax, what is that? Kushina asked. I had to go get groceries and when I went to pay for my stuff it should have cost about 200 ryo, but the guy charged me 320 ryo saying the rest was the orphan's tax. The air seemed to get cold all of a sudden, signaling that his mom was pissed off, Naru-chan there is no such thing as an orphan's tax. So he was lying, I thought so, there just wasn't anything I could do about it, I was out of food. I see Kushina said, anger evident on her face, I guess we, no, I think it is time to teach you a jutsu. Really, I finally get to learn another jutsu. Don't get me wrong, the sealing jutsu is awesome and I can finally use it with two hand seals, but is the only one I know Naruto said to defend himself. Good job with that, you are doing really well, now, I'm going to teach you the henge no jutsu, transformation technique, but you have to promise me something. Sure Ka Chan what is it? Promise me that you will never hide who you are. What do you mean? I thought this technique was supposed to turn me into something else. What I mean is that despite the fact that you will be using it to do what you need to, don't ever let anyone force to use it constantly and hide yourself behind a mask unless you are doing it on purpose, you are a wonderful person don't ever hide that from the world, force them to see you for you. I promise Ka Chan, I will stay true to myself, even if I use a mask to fool people. Good, now to sew this jutsu the hand seal sequence is dog. Boar, ram, as you mold the chakra in this sequence picture what you want to transform into. You have to be extremely precise with the details as this is just an illusion that you are using to change what people see and has no substance so you have to be careful that no one accidentally puts a hand something that is supposed to be there and isn't, like your head. When you first use this technique it will create a puff of smoke to hide the change, but as you become more proficient you will be able to get rid of that if you want, now try it. Naruto studied his mother closely before making the three hand seals and shouting henge no jutsu and turning into his mother, how is this? he asked in Kushina's voice. Very good she said after studying him for a couple minutes, the only problem I see is the whisker marks, I don't have any, she finished brushing hair from his face before rubbing the said whiskers causing him to start purring, are you purring? That feels good, kind of comforting, Kushina let her hand fall down Naruto's chest, not expecting to touch anything, only to find she was touching her own chest, she snatched her hand back and suddenly grabbed Naruto's, her, hair, still expecting her hand to pass through it only to grab solid hair that felt exactly like hers, tell me what you feel she said and suddenly pulled Naruto's hair, hard. Ow ow ow, that hurts Ka Chan, why did you do that? Naruto, think about what I'm doing, what is this technique? It is an ill, an illusion Naruto said finally realizing her meaning. Exactly this is an illusion, or at least it is supposed to be, maybe this is another side effect of his chakra mixing with the foxes, stop channeling chakra. Naruto thought about that for a second, I'm not channeling any. Hmm, try creating a pulse of chakra then, how? Collect some chakra like you are going to channel it, then compress it into a smaller space and release it, 
Kushina replied, you can also use this technique to disrupt Genjutsu if you get caught one and can't activate your eyes for some reason. Okay, here I go Naruto said as he began collecting some chakra and compressing it like his mother said, when he released the pulse he knocked Kushina off of her feet but also turned back into his normal form. Good job Naru-chan, but next time less chakra, you could probably dispel a Genjutsu covering all of Kanoa with a pulse that powerful. Okay, it'll be more careful from now on, well, both of those techniques have a lot of potential Kushina said, looking up at his mother he saw her licking her lips, anticipation glittering in her eyes, but we'll worry about that later. Okay Naruto replied, kinda scared, well enough of that for now, try it again but this time turn into a slightly taller version of yourself with flat brown hair and brown eyes. After working on the Henge no Jutsu until Naruto had mastered it and the chakra pulse necessary to dispel it, while being small enough for no one to notice, they went back to their regular routine of cooking and taijutsu practice. Just before Naruto was ready to stop for the night, Kushina had one last thing to say, Okay Naru-chan, now that you are okay at cooking you should go and buy a cookbook and try making dishes out of that, you might find some that I can teach you, also, it might be a good time to find a way to make people underestimate you. It won't be a big deal for another few months but keep it in mind. I will mom, Thanks for the advice Naruto said before falling asleep and going back to the real world. Naruto's apartment realizing that it was time to go pick up his allowance Naruto made his way to the Hokage Tower, entering the tower and heading toward the Hokage's office he ran past receptionist and knocked on the door. Come in came the Hokage's voice from the other side of the door. Naruto threw open the door and went inside, good morning Gigi he called out. Good morning Naruto, how have the past couple of weeks been? They have been great Gigi, I even made a two new friends and one that might become a friend later, I only ran into him once. Really, who are they? The Hokage asked, happy to hear the news. My new friends names are Nara Shikamaru and Akamichi Choji and the one that might become a friend is Uchiha Sasuke. Really, that is impressive, how did you run into them? Haruzan asked, amazed at Naruto's good luck. Sasuke I ran into after you left when I went exploring. I saw him sitting alone on a pier and talked to him until his Ni-chan came and took him home, they were both really nice, I met Shikamaru and Choji the next day. I played a game of shogi with Shikamaru after he taught me how, I lost, but I made him take his serious pose a couple of times, at least that is what Choji said. Well, I'm glad you had fun he said with a smile, then he went through his desk and took out an envelope to give to Naruto, here is your allowance, don't waste it my boy. Thanks GG Naruto said before leaving well isn't that interesting. The professor thought the boy certainly has some extraordinary luck, becoming friends with the heirs of two great clans and with the son of another clan head. At the park after getting his allowance, Naruto went and bought a good cookbook, he was under henge but he got it. Then he dropped it off at his apartment and decided to go to the park early for once. When he arrived at the park he saw four boys that were a year or two older than him picking on two girls, getting mad at the sight, he ran over and punched the one that looked to be the leader instinctively channeling some chakra through his limbs in his anger. With a single punch he was knocked unconscious and seeing their leader go down so easily, he was the biggest after all, the other boys took off, running away as fast as they could. Are you two okay? Naruto asked the girls as he held out a hand for them to grab. One had a slightly larger than normal forehead that was emphasized by her shoulder length pink hair. She was wearing a grayish blue kimono top with navy blue trimming and knee length navy blue shorts. The other one had blue black hair that hung slightly past her ears with a longer bang on each side of her face that reached her chin. Unlike the pink haired girl, she was wearing a traditional ankle length pale lavender kimono that matched her pupil less eyes. Yes, thanks for the help, the pink haired girl said when Naruto looked at her. Im Haruno Sakura, who are you? Im Uzumaki Naruto. Though one day I'm going to be one of the best shinobi in the village Naruto said brimming with confidence, then he turned to the other girl, how about you? Anano I am Hugo Hanata she said in a quiet stuttering voice while looking at him with a bit of admiration. Why were they picking on you? Naruto asked once they had finished their introductions. They were picking on me because of my forehead and Hanata's eyes Sakura said dejectedly. Why there is nothing wrong with your forehead and Hanata's eyes show her bloodline and are pretty anyway. Thank you, TTH thank why you, how did you not know about my EIs, Hanata asked. I read about them in a book about the history of Kanoa. I see, do you two have anywhere to go? No, my car San should be here in a few minutes so I have to stay here Sakura said. 
I sure should get H home, Hanata said but Naruto could tell she didn't really want to, but I can't see my guard. How about I take you home then? Naruto asked wondering if he could find out why she stuttered so much. Th thank you, I would appreciate I it, okay, where to, lead the way. After walking for a couple minutes Naruto started talking again, I know this might be mean, but why do you stutter so much? Hanata flushed, turning bright red, W why do you I ask? No reason really, you just seem like a nice person, so I was just wondering what caused it. Hanata didn't answer for a few minutes and Naruto had almost given up on an answer, I think M my FF father hates M me and the E elders M make it worse B because M be bad at my CC clan's taijutsu s style. Well I can't help you with your father, but maybe the taijutsu style just doesn't fit you Naruto stated. W what what do you mean? Hanata asked intently never realizing that her stutter had disappeared for a moment. Well, the person who is teaching me taijutsu said that while she could teach me the basics, her style didn't fit my body type or personality, maybe your clan's taijutsu doesn't fit you either, you could always learn a different style or think about what you're good at and adapt it to fit your strengths Naruto said thinking about his mother's taijutsu lessons. And my clan would then never allow that, then don't tell them, that same person said that deception was one of the most important parts of being a shinobi, if your opponent underestimates you or you do something they don't expect you have a much better chance of winning or at least surviving. I see, thank why you for your H help, this is my H home she said as they came to the gate of a wall compound. As soon as they came into view of gates the guard saw him and ran toward them, Hanata Sama did this to brat do anything to hurt you, get out of here you brat. Almost expecting that type of treatment, Naruto just ran off with a foxy grin on his face, see you around Hanata-chan. After leaving Hanata at home, Naruto went to his training area and proceeded with his daily training, his laps around the clearing now taking him over the small river instead of avoiding it. Mindscape after finishing his day and going to sleep Naruto appeared in the mindscape and could immediately tell something was different, the very atmosphere seemed different than the day before, wondering what had happened, Naruto ran toward his mom's house. Ka-chan, Ka Chan, what's going on? He called out as soon as he arrived. Naru Chan, come in the room where you first found me, came Kushina's reply. Noticing that Kushina seemed happy, he went into the storage room. Look, Naru Chan, your two san is finally awake, he heard as he went through the door, only to find a funny sight. His father was awake, but only his head and right arm weren't covered by the crystal ice substance, though the rest of it was completely clear. Walking over to the crystalline pillar he reached out to touch it as he asked his question, so this is my father. As soon as he touched the pillar it shattered outward just like Kushina's had, letting him fall to the floor. That was fun the man said, I think it is time you introduce yourself, Naru-chan looks like he is about to burst, Kushina said berating him. Sorry, hi Naruto, I'm your father, Namikaze Minato. I was the Yondava Hokage before I died he said watching Naruto's eyes light up and jaw drop at the same time. You're the fourth, you have been my hero since I first heard about you, so that is what Kichi meant when he said the seals were put on me by the Yon, Yond, fourth guy and why the letter said that my father put the seals on me, but if you are my two san then why does everyone hate me? Naruto asked, his once happy voice slightly duller. I'm afraid that no one but Saruto B. Sama, Jiraiya Sensei, and possibly Kakashi no, Minato said sadly. But why not? Have you read about the third great shinobi war? Yeah, you basically ended it by defeating a lot the Iwa shinobi right? Naruto asked. Yes, and that is exactly the problem, if they knew you were my son they would stop at nothing to kill you, that is why you have your mother's last name, to protect you until you are strong enough to claim my clan name without fearing for your life. But still, that doesn't explain why people hate me. I know, I will tell you but you have to promise me that you will never tell anyone that you know until you are told in the real world, if you ever break this promise neither I nor your mother will ever teach you anything ever again, do you understand? Yes Naruto said realizing how serious his father was, I swear I won't say anything about it to anyone that doesn't live here until I learn in the real world. Good, the reason I ask this is because if the wrong people knew you would be in even more danger than if Iwe knew you were my son. Now tell me what you know about the day you were born Minato asked happy at his son's determination. October 10th five years ago, the Kyuubi suddenly appeared outside of Kanoa and started attacking, you killed it with a jutsu that cost your life Naruto recited. That is both right and wrong, I did manage to defeat it while at the same time losing my life, but I didn't kill it, 
No mortal can kill a tailed beast. Instead I summoned the Shinigami and sentenced my soul and the Cubus Yin, dark, half to fight for eternity in his stomach, the other half is still alive, but it is also sealed Minato said pausing to make sure Naruto understood. It is sealed in me isn't it? Naruto asked, yes, how did you know? Your letter said that I have several seals on me, but never said how many and I've heard some of the villagers call me a demon, and the sewer. The sewer? What do you mean? Minato asked, confused. When I arrive in the mindscape I can go two ways, the first one leads here and the second leads into a sewer. I always thought it was scary so I never went there Naruto said. I see, anyway that was a very good deduction, I'm impressed, yes the Kyuubi is sealed inside of you and you could probably find it if you went down that sewer, just always remember this, the Kyuubi is the Kyuubi, you are you, you are two completely different beings, never doubt that okay. Minato said very firmly, making sure to hold Naruto's eyes with his, I want to san Naruto said then grabbed his father in a hug, I'm glad you're here now, thanks for watching.